we're recording these, um, which means I just hit the record button because I forgot before we started. Um, you know, it's not audio issues now. It's just recording the right at the right time. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll fix that. I, I will time. talk while I'm muted. That's that's almost guaranteed for every single podcast I do. Um, yeah, but that's your audio issues. That's not my audio issues. <laughs> Normally, it's just my audio issues. Uh, I forget to hit the right button. I uh, have something set up wrong. It's amazing. Uh, so the first thing that uh, I think would be an interesting discussion, um, let's talk about current tech trends, right? We're in the cloud era. We're in the uh, everyone's moving to the cloud. Every, all the workstations, all the machines, you can buy a machine, spend time in the cloud. Um, as a vendor, you uh, VoIP is very similar to the technology trends that are happening, right? There's, it, it's a massive evolution in all technology areas. Um, how do you get your staff to be aware that new tech trends are happening? And how do you train them to be prepared for those tech trends when they, and, or even adopt them as a company? um to, to to when they happen yeah i mean that's i always say it like when i first started msp right um way back you know way back in the day um i didn't have all the resources everybody has now right you can go on msp geek and talk to ten thousand people that have done what you're doing or made the mistakes before you make them and they're happy to share their advice you can go on on reddit and talk to those thousands of people you can go to conferences Back when I started, none of this was there. It was literally getting Computer Shopper, do not date me, getting Computer Shopper or getting PC Mag or whatever. Um, you know, we had to crank the wheel and fire up the generator so we can do dial tone to connect to the internet. Um, you know, but we didn't have the resources we have now. Now you can go to CDE, you can go to, you know, channel, you can go to whatever you want and the information's there, like ridiculous amounts. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not like back when it used to be where you had to go out and seek information. Um, MSPs today and my staff today, it's the same thing. They can go consume it however they want. If they they prefer Facebook because you know they're in the over 50 crowd or they prefer Discord or Slack or they wanna go to websites or an RSS feed or whatever, they can consume it in exactly the way they want. Um, my personal thing is I've always done I like the communities, right? That's exactly how I found, you know, started with the, the Reddit stuff. Um, I like being an MSP geek. I like being an MRU and IT pool party and all the other ones. Because when stuff comes up, usually somebody complaining about, oh, this is going on, print nightmare or log4j. I got log4j before I got the, before I looked at the CompTIA ISO uh, notification, I got it from somebody else that was in another Slack telling me what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then I went and looked at the email. Um, that kind of immediate uh you know that kind of immediate information can't be beat right because it's one thing to have everything thrown at you but it's another thing to have it qualified but one, by one of your peers or one of your colleagues so one of the things i do with my staff when i um bring them on unlike other organizations where they're like don't get on social and don't you know don't get on TikTok or whatever um i actually have a list of community resources and i tell my staff join these things find the ones you like join them um and actually i can show this here um is it working yeah you're displaying yourself and your picture in picture oh that's oh there we go okay um which i'm calling but yeah this is a doc and i'll put i'll put it in the uh, chat um and jay mcbain had a, does a list of over 140 communities uh every year mm -hmm. um of you know what the communities keep track of but whether it's a podcast whether it's discord slack facebook whatever you know i tell them go join one of these things whether it's you know keeping track of you know geek cast future now or whatever it happens to be um you know hint hint but that kind of stuff you know that's super important because it keeps you up to date on what's going on and they're not going to give you all the information they're just going to tell you hey look this is something that's going on so you have to be you have to be the one to go and you know research it of course um and we look for employees that we look for people to join the team that have that kind of passion that have that curiosity um because you can't teach that there, there's yeah. never in a million years it's, it's very yeah. difficult and exactly like, like gav says uh you know beat them with sticks until they get it i mean that's obviously that's definitely so. an option um one i've highly considered multiple times uh with with staff is just hey look you don't get it don't I, i've tried the carrot I, i'll go out back <laughs> 
So it's like one of the things we do is we do OKRs, right? I can't remember if it was uh, Google or I forget who started OKRs, uh, objection, uh, know, objectives wanna, and key results. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's objectives and key results. Basically you have an objective. I want to increase my knowledge of the tech sector, right? Or security, right? Everybody wants to do security today. Uh, five years ago it was dev today it's security. Um, then you have key results. You say, okay, well, I want to, during this time period, um, I want to become a master at, uh, or I want to be able to fully understand in detail five red light high severity CVEs. I, I want to know how to diagnose them. I want to know how to tear them apart. These should be very difficult things, but attainable. And so the whole point of the key results is that you have them, they're quantifiable, you can track them. Um, and you can go after them and Google and Zappos and Twitter and all these other companies do this. We do it internally, we do it quarterly. Um, we make time on the job. So we, depending on what the OKR is, it's determined with management, um, but it's usually one to two hours per week uh, on the job. Um, they work on these things and they update and it's part of their performance reviews, uh, part of their compensation adjustments and all that stuff. Um, but we wanna encourage that kind of learning. And so, you can do these things and we look for people we tell them when we're hiring them if you're not going to be excited about learning if you're not going to be passionate about always moving the bar if you're just going to be the kind of person that's stagnant this is not the org for you i don't think tech works really for that <laughs> that kind of personality um it's definitely difficult and so to, we, to continue if you just are the the, the i'm going to stay stationary I mean, it's evolved. yeah I mean, exactly since i've been in tech backups exploded you know, Datto, I was around before Datto, you know, tape backup still running in Symantec, backup exec. Um, oh, you then, know, you got your LTOs, you're still swapping. Uh, and, <laughs> oh, and uh, and then, you know, we moved into automate every, literally everything uh, in your life and then um, increase your processes for your PSA systems into, into, oh my God, everything leaks like a sieve, patch it all. Um, I mean, it's, oh, yeah. and that's, that's eight years. <laughs> I mean, that's not a long time for that amount of evolution to no. take place. It's a ridiculous speed that, that we have to operate at. And, you know, I, I completely get, I don't want to say it's my mentality because that's really the difference between corp IT and, and MSP, right? Um, corp IT, you get that, that core set of technologies you become familiar with and you become hopefully the expert at that. And, you know, and you'll probably bring in ex experts when you need in certain technologies, whatever, but that's your thing. I, I understand it. It's not me. I don't think it's most people in MSP, but I understand it. MSP, on the other hand, you like running. You don't stop running. <laughs> it is nonstop. Uh, we're like the sharks of the IT world, right? You got to keep moving or you drown. Um, yeah, it's, it's, but I love that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it, you get, you get a rush. Like, mm -hmm. not one issue is going to be the same. Like, your email system goes down. It could be six email systems goes down and they're all different and they're all different causes. Yeah. It's, uh, it, you, but you get that thrill, that dopamine hit of you know, solving that problem, and then you get another dopamine hit of solving the other problem, and then now you're addicted. I actually, uh, I worked with a guy who did our entry level uh, at my old position um, at the old company, uh, who was just a regular remote help desk support tech, um, and uh, he moved to a different job to do sysadmin for a corp IT, <clears throat> and uh, he was like, yeah, I'm starting to learn PowerShell, or I'm starting to learn SQL and trying to do some SQL queries. And I'm like, once you get started with SQL, you're going to want a DevOp. Um, if you like doing SQL, you'll start finding it. You'll start doing more PowerShell and more DevOp. And he was like, nah, I'm not going to do that. Uh, a year and a half later, he changed his, uh, he was currently going to school. He changed his major to computer science. Uh, and now he's getting a job as a C-sharp backend dev uh, because he fell in the trap <laughs> of yeah, finding mean, fun yeah and that that's a, that's a brilliant kind of mind right like one of the things i ask even for tier ones when we're hiring during the interview process i ask them what's your github and the ones are like huh you know it's a different i'm not saying i would cut i wouldn't hire them i'm just saying the ones that you know say oh yeah here's my github and and i look for different technologies or different because i don't expect you to be a developer but you know, at least that you've done a couple of YouTube, you know, you know, projects or whatever code alongs or, you know, you have something. So you've played with some Python or some, you know, I don't want to say go because I know who's going to jump in, oh, but, you know, or some PowerShell or whatever. Um, 
you know, I mean, I respect the hell out of that. You know, that tells me the kind of people I want to, I want around me. Um, yeah. Don't look at my GitHub. <laughs> uh, it's an embarrassing set of uh, in information. I mean, yeah, we're just not going to go there. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, the, the future is obviously cl cloud technology and utilizing cloud technology. How has that affected you um, and your company? Like how, because you obviously have two sides of the coin. You have setting up systems for the cloud and then you have setting up systems to be digested by MSPs and users obviously also in the cloud right so i think that's uh, so cloud is the future i think is just the easy that's the scapegoat right that that is just like if you want to sound like you know what you're talking about you say cloud is the future right it's it's like everything's hd or everything you know whatever um synergy who um my thing is you know i think the bar has been raised for MSPs. Um, we talk about the ones that are that are truly delivering consultancy, that are truly delivering advice, right? Like if you've read Gavin Stone's blog or you've implemented any of Kelvin scripts uh, at my blog, cyberdrain.com, um, or blog. you're finding ways to make your processes better, mm -hmm. that is a whole different class of, of tech or of person. And, and it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're doing some node or you're doing serverless or you're doing AWS or Azure or GCS, it doesn't matter. The point is that you're figuring out ways to automate things. You're you're trying to figure out ways to improve the user experience. And I think that's the real catch. Cloud does improve the user experience if you leverage it the right way. But improving the user experience is the unstated goal or understated goal, better said. Um, and I feel the MSPs that are doing that today, um, either stepping into it, figuring out dynamics, power automate, um, it doesn't matter what you're doing, figuring out codeless or low code technologies, right? Um, I know we've had this conversation back and forth about no code, low code stuff, um, you know, whether it is really worthy of being called programming or it's worthy of being a production environment. I believe it is. And I believe the MSPs that are going to get people just like five years ago that they got people that were into data analytics and were able to understand Power BI. The people that are going to learn to leverage these technologies today, Workato, Trey, Automata, 8N8, whatever, um, Zapier, of course. Um, the people that are able to leverage those technologies today to tie in all these cloud resources, those are going to be the powerhouse MSPs of tomorrow. I, I fully agree. I mean, it's it's a DevOps is no longer really needed. Um, that's that that's hit its stride. I mean, it's 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 still a useful category, but a lot of people have built the automation that that's in place today, and people freely share that information and that those scripts and those PowerShell abilities and um, the need to create new DevOps resources, uh, PowerShell scripts. Um, monitors and stuff is is slowly fading because all the apps are going cloud you don't have an email server to monitor anymore you don't have an app server to monitor anymore um you barely have an ad <laughs> um depending on the size of the company you may not even want one present uh right it's it's everything's moving to the cloud because it's easier it's not always cheaper that's important no. to understand um it is moving a capital expense into an operational expense but it's usually more expensive um yeah and it's but but that's okay right because like we're talking you know I, I think a ton of people look to and that's you know the msps the sales teams for these msps of today and tomorrow are going to be the ones that are better able to explain the value right in the dev world you have this thing called user stories right before we build a feature you start asking okay well what's the business case around it what's the user case around it so we can explain the value so we understand what we're expecting going forward both the experience and the feature um the MSPs, the technical side today, right? And sales engineer, the boogeyman of, of tech, right? That's where you go to, to <laughs> that's where you go out to pasture and die. But like the, the regular tech resources, the frontline techs, right? Your tier one, tier two, your PMs, your, your backend engineers, they should also be able to explain today what the user stories are so that the salespeople can leverage that in their sales mechanisms, right? So when we're talking about, you know, we're improving the user experience, when we're talking about we're tying in, yes, it's costing you more, the MSP is earning more as well, but you're getting resources that is not gonna be, if, if your MSP is starting in their sales presentation with this is my stack, you know what I mean? That's not the MSP I want working for me, you not know what anymore. I mean? Versus a salesperson that walks it, not anymore. 
versus a salesperson that walks in and says, you know, oh, what apps are you using? Oh, you're using Salesforce, you're using Pipedrive, you're using whatever you're using. We can tie this together to get you that single pane of glass, right? That mythical unicorn, mm -hmm. or we can tie this together so you stop swivel sharing and, you know, let's leverage SAML so you stop, you know, logging in from one place to another to another, you know, as long as you're not using a certain vendor's SSO that goes down weekly. Um, you know, it's it Let, just... I mean, you could even set up, let's set up your, you know, act, let's set up as your AD so you can log in from anywhere and have access to all your entire suite of applications and shared drives from anywhere. Absolutely. Without that, that sounds astounding. I mean, that come with setting right. up VPNs and tunnels and, you know, the, the RDP. <laughs> Shut RDP down. Well, and it wasn't that long ago, right? We we went from we went from using like Dameware or whatever other remote access solution to doing RDP to RDG to always on VPN. Remember that always on VPN? I forget the name of it with that came out with 2012 R2. That was amazing. And then it was like, you actually don't even need this anymore because you have Intune, you have autopilot, you have MD, you know, endpoint manager. Like this stuff is amazing. And it, it's making it easier and easier. You have to understand these difficult technologies, absolutely but it's lowering the bar to how difficult it is to deploy it, right? And that's that's the real gift there, um, where you don't have to sit there and say, okay, I, I need a 12 month degree in, in how to leverage this, because those people that were sitting there doing, you know, creating their golden images and <laughs> doing their WDS and, you know what I mean? And now today oh, you get Immibot or you get Autopilot. Yeah, yeah, exactly, I hated it. Uh, you know, SCC, SCCM was oh, miserable. Let's, let's um, go down that path. Right. And, and today I've switched laptops three times in the last six months. Um, and that used to be misery for me. I used to remember resetting my laptop. I do it once a year. And today I switch laptops back and forth because I don't care because my OneDrive is going to be there. My profile is going to be there. My apps are going to automatically install within an hour. I'm good. Like, you know what I mean? It's not even complicated. The one drive that copies over has the nine night installer that I already want. Like for that, those few yeah. things we don't have an autopilot. It, within an hour, I'm good to go. Instead of um, those USB drives you used to carry around with you to plug in and have those specific tool sets, it's just you can, you can press a button and log in. I should not even press a button, just log in, and it starts manipulating your system the way you need it to be. Yes, or, or you know, or if you're one of those like me that loves the toys, I had um, what was it IOD? I think that there was an SSD, but it, it treated it like a USB drive or a CD-ROM drive, um, and you could boot from it, and you can select which ISO you were booting from. Um, you know, I was like, oh, this is so cool! I have my toolkit, so I'm not carrying 15 or 20 CDs with me in a book everywhere I go. Yeah, I mean, those days are gone, and I yeah. love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's semantic ghost for life. Oh, no, semantic <laughs> ghost. Oh, there's, I, um, it, it's it's a, uh, it's it's just the technology is evolving at a rapid pace. Like it's in it's insane. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd love to keep talking about this, but we do have other things to discuss um, today. Uh, so let's let's pivot a little bit to the um, the current one of the current major things that's just constantly in discussion and that is oversight by the government the evil government right um what is uh what does regulation mean to you as a vendor in the msp space what does what does that look like to you and is that something that do you think msps can get in front of and help or do you think it's something that is just going to have to happen and the, the, the politicians are going to do it. So I, I have to derail a little bit only because you have this going so smoothly, um, far more smoothly than anything I've ever done myself. Um, so I think you can't have the, ho one of the hosts of tech bar on here without us talking about what we're drinking. Um, so I think since this is your show, it's being asked. It's in the chat. I see oh. it's being asked. What are you drinking? And I know it's more uh, than just water. So I've got water, and I've also got a, a Voodoo Ranger IPA that I've been drinking on. And and I, w I just want to say I'm proud of you because before IT Nation, we were talking about booze, and you were not the hard liquor guy. And I, I feel you have developed a, a deep appreciation for certain liquors we're not counting Crown Apple, but you have developed a deep appreciation for some of these things, which I'm very proud of. Oh, um, I appreciate that. I love Crown Apple. <laughs> there, it, it just adds <laughs> extra flavor. I mean, there's a, I have Crown Vanilla also, and it added that to Coke, and you get like vanilla Coke with with liquor in it, and you just can't you just can't beat that. 
see the good stuff you don't need to add anything it's just a few drops of water and you're good maybe a whiskey stone but see I don't, um, I'm, I'm not drinking a constant drinker so that no that, I'm not that, not either that believe it or not me a lot I have to prepare like yeah. when we go to IT nation at events like that I have to prepare I I drink on like the two weeks before like a lot to prepare are you gonna be at right of boom I will not be a right of boom um my <sighs> wife I was gonna uh, say my wife is taking our oldest he's on a fifth grade field trip to disney so that week is they're going to disney oh nice yeah so i will not okay. I have the other child unfortunately um otherwise i'd be like go i'm gone so yeah take so, advantage yeah. what well, are you drinking i'm doing wild turkey rare breed i've done this on a previous tech bar um very good stuff uh like it a lot and uh mm -hmm. out of respect uh, for mr dave coles i will raise a glass and say namaste which you know is one of our drinking words so. Um, while, while you're doing that, uh, partner success, uh, yes, you're correct. One of our topics that hasn't happened yet is the responsibility of vendors to MSPs. That's next. Um, yeah. we, I, I figured that's going to be the longest discussion. So I saved it for last. Yes. Uh, so I figured well, it's we'd something we're both very passionate about. Oh, a hundred percent. Uh, so I figured we'd hit the, the two easy, easiest ones first, um, to, to <laughs> the low hanging fruit, the low hanging that's fruit fair. before we, uh, we go on the probably 17 hour tirade. Um, <laughs> so. I was already being asked, Martin was asking about the, uh, if we're going to have an after party after this, uh, I mean, uh, which I'm totally down for. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, which we call it. So yeah, to your question, right? Regulation, deregulation, how it affects vendors, how it affects MSPs. Um, and, and, uh, you know, for clarity, I sit on one of the boards. I sit on the finance board of, uh, the finance committee, I'm sorry, for the national society of it service providers, um, as a vendor, uh, you know, while I still consider myself deep down inside as an MSP, the truth is I haven't taken new MSP business in several years got rid of most of my almost all of my msp clients um i'm a vendor i'm one of those shady vendors um but i still in my heart i'm an msp so when it comes to regulation deregulation it's coming right whether you listen to i did a, a partner first with fifth wall um who represents the major carriers uh doing cybersecurity policies to our msp clients um or to the msp's clients um or, you know, whether it's the regulation in Louisiana, and now I think uh, Pennsylvania just passed one too. Um, you know, the regulation's coming. The, the, the real thing is, I think we universally appreciate the people are unqualified to be making the determinations of what, what the impact is to MSPs and to the vendors. Um, I'm not worried about the vendors, right? I'm, I'm not worried about us from the sense that we have... <laughs> I don't want to say we have big pockets. I'm one of the smaller vendors on the on the spectrum, but you know the big boys, right? The big four, the the really giant ones, the solar winds, that they're going to have the money to defend themselves as they need, and they're going to get what they need done. That's the absolute truth of the matter. I'm worried about the MSPs not being able to gather together and say, "Look, you guys are making these decisions. You're saying, okay, well, MFA to everything." And one of the questions, and I'm absolutely for MSA MFA on everything. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, when you're saying, okay, I'm not going to give a cybersecurity policy because you said you have MFA on everything, but I have a vendor that doesn't allow MFA. What do you do? You stop using that vendor? And OIT VoIP absolutely allows MFA. So let me clear that up. But, you know, the truth of the matter is, or, or MFA on what? Are they talking about MFA on your OS? Or are they talking about MFA on your CRM? Or are they talking about it on your, on your NOC or your RMM or your PSA? You know, or what about these applications that are, the charge, right? We've seen SSO tax, right? Or these ones that charge for MFA. Um, how does that play into it? And that, that'll go into the vendor responsibility we're talking about. Um, but it's why I deeply believe we need to step up and have a hand in the conversations. I don't know. It's still early days. I don't know if we're going to be heard. I don't know if it's going to be effective, but I'm a firm believer in do what, do what you can or don't complain about what you didn't do. Um, that's why I'm with NSITP, ITSP. They're having a meeting on, I'll put it in the chat. It's, it's coming up. Um, that's open to everybody, members and not. And I'm not even saying NSITSP is the answer. I'm saying do something. If you have a tie in with your local gov, if you have tie in with your, if you have some kind of contacts at your state or, or whatever level, start having the conversations, start paying attention to what's of interest to them. Because the last thing you want is them setting rules and then you have to abide by them. And what do you do when, you know, you're 
client says, oh, you can't work with us because you don't, you have the wrong RMM when it doesn't really matter. Right. And, and that's what I'm really worried for oh, yeah, with MSPs. A, so let me, let me ask you this. So IT and SP, whatever it is, uh, the acronym, <laughs> um, uh, I've, I've looked at them, I've looked into them and I've mm -hmm. reviewed their, uh, stuff that they have available on their website. And to say that I am unimpressed and disappointed by what's available is probably an accurate statement. Um, they provide their initial uh, proposal, um, mm -hmm. which is seven pages long and is, it's, it's very, I'm pretty sure that's new. Um, because that's not yeah. what I saw. It's it's ever evolving. Yeah, uh, and I hundred percent agree. But from a PR perspective, from a, a first reaction perspective, I want nothing to do with them because yeah. what I read was it said you should have MFA. It didn't say on what. Just like we were discussing, and that was the it. Right. that was the only security information that was listed, and that was severely disappointing to me from something that had been around for eight months at that time when I, when I reviewed it. Uh, yeah. and I, I, from what that document you just pulled up, that, that looks like it's a way different beast and that looks much more impressive than, um, what I initially saw, which was only seven pages. Uh, so if that's the, I, I'm fully behind stuff that, that looks like it's going to work. Right. I, I, I'd rather not waste time supporting something that doesn't match my personal goals or my personal morals. Um, or it looks like it's just going to be yeah, additional. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to be completely transparent. NSI, TSP, I don't speak on behalf of all of yeah. them, right? Uh, Carl Palachok is, is one of the founders. Um, there are literally hundreds of MSPs and, and you know several vendors involved in there. Um, one of my charges as part of my finance committee is determining how vendors can be part of it without having vendors take control of it. Um, that's something I'm personally... It, it's tough, right? Because I think the vendor should be responsible for paying for a good portion of it. We profit from the MSPs. We should pay to support the MSPs. Um, but that doesn't mean have control over what affects the MSPs. So we've done, and that's one of the challenges. If anybody has ideas, please reach out because we're working with the ethics committee, uh, the ethics task force to develop exactly what those standards are, because I don't want there to be any question on it, regardless of funding amount. But I will be very clear. It is not perfect. It is not, Nothing I don't want to say it has all its, I'm sorry. Nothing's ever going to be perfect. Um, no, and I it's mean, very raw. Let me say it that way. Right. It's yeah. very, very raw. Um, but I don't think there's anything else right now that, that is even coming close to getting a group together. Um, Jason Slagle joined me on the finance committee. Uh, today was his first meeting. Um, <laughs> I think he did it more as a favor to me than anything else. Um, but you know, he has, he's bringing his brilliant ideas. Um, you know, and it's just a matter of like getting part of becoming part of the conversation. I, even with NSITSP, I listened for a while just to pay attention to what the emails were going out and what they were saying without any participation. It was just, I want to know what's being talked about. Um, you know, and even toward that end, I, I invite everybody to join just for that. There's no cost to join just to hear what's being discussed. And if something piques your interest where you want to be active in something great, if you think it's absolutely full of it, say that too. And you can say it to me privately. I don't, I don't get offended by that stuff. Yeah. Um, cause at the end of the day, it, it needs to be to protect the MSPs. Um, cause I think we're better having a hand in the conversation than just letting them decide what happens to the, the MSP world. So to address partner success there, currently there's no real legislation, um, in Louisiana that the legislation that was passed is if a, one of your, as an amended service provider, if one of your clients pays a ransom, you're attached to a list and it, that list is publicly viewable. Um, so at that point you see who's ransomware and who's paid that's been reported. It's a publicly available list that's collected from the MSP or from each MSP in Louisiana. And it's required by law. Um, and that's the type of thing that's scary because that loses you business, even though it could be no fault of your own. Um, if a client downloads something, because they refuse to upgrade their firewall or refuse to have MFA or refuse to do a whole bunch of other things. Um, they're not going to 
they're not gonna they're just gonna they're you're a, you're at that point responsible even though you're not you can only do so much right um but to the world you're responsible and you do have a slight bit of responsibility but it's it's gonna affect you more and more as like a, i don't know what pennsylvania passed but i mean it's going to happen people are going to regulate them and that's and I, I think martin brings up an excellent point the insurance industry is going to be the, the biggest driver of oh, it yeah. um just like you know with the payment card industry you know the pci um you know where they the the big credit right the amex visa mastercard they got together and they said okay well we're going to make our own policies these aren't federal gov mandates these aren't anything we're going to make our own policies and we're not going to pay you if these things happen and if you don't attest that you're secure and if, for those of you that don't know if you accept credit cards in, or ach credit cards can retroactively claw back up to 18 months you can pay some they could pay you you can be done with it and then they determined that you know there was a credit card dispute or whatever and or you had a breach and it was your fault and then whatever they can go back up to 18 months and take that money back out um ach has a i think ach is like 12 months or six months or something like that um but the payment card industry made their decision by themselves I, and i think insurance has the same clause when it comes to money what they're going to what they're going to support what they're going to honor what they're going to you know back up when it comes to claims I think they have the clause and I think they need to be part of these conversations and they're making decisions 100%. for themselves too. You know what I mean? Don't, don't get it twisted. They're absolutely revising these things. You talk to anybody and they say, well, for the last five years, they were kind of just making it up as they go. Cause it wasn't that really big of a deal. There's a little bit of crypto, but it wasn't, you know, whatever. Yeah. Now it's like, oh wait, yeah, people are getting ransomed. People are getting, you know, we're having to pay out several hundred thousand dollars. Forget the payout of the ransom. You have, you have, the repercussions of having to you know nuke and pave a nuke and you have the the repercussions of having having to get systems back up and running that costs hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars even on the lower end so oh, yeah. especially if it's they're making a changes operate. um cyber security yeah. insurance is definitely going to drive the market to, to to its own internal regulation if it's not done by someone else um i mean you can't get a cyber there's it's very difficult to get an msp insurance policy um, because the, the amount of stuff that you have to deal with is, is ridiculous and insurance companies aren't willing to take on that risk. Um, cybersecurity insurance itself is, is difficult to, to obtain based on what you have and what's available. Um, being HIPAA and PCI compliant isn't always going to allow you to have that insurance, even though a lot of the stuff overlaps. Um, there are clients um, I've, that I've encountered in my entire career in IT that refuse to do anything HIPAA related or PCI related. They just ignore it. Well, and that's that's why I say MSPs, it's, you know, the reputation of the MSPs is quickly becoming like that that attorneys used to have, right? In the 90s and the 2000s, um, where they were the bane of every jokes, right? What do they say? You know, a thousand attorneys covered up to their neck in sand, what do you say? You, it's not enough sand, you know, those jokes. Yeah. But it's turning to MSPs, right? It's turning where, you know, MSPs are the bad people, right? They're the bad guy, bad girl, whatever. Um, you know, and so I think we have to be very cautious with, I've, and I've always been a proponent of this. I mean, you go back to my talks that I've given for ConnectWise and for BrightGage and for Microsoft, 10 years ago and i was saying the same thing be selective to your with your clients Perfect. make sure they're in alignment with you don't just take any money don't do the i'm a i hate the waivers i absolutely hate the waivers the liability stuff you know what i mean because all it takes is that one client getting breached and suddenly it's the msp's fault even if you told them you need to enable mfa you need to enable ca you need to enable whatever and they didn't want to do it and they signed a paper there's there's no news article that says but the client signed a waiver I've never seen that article. It's not. It doesn't exist. Not even that because it's not like, salacious enough. Is that going to hold up in court? Like they signed a waiver. Cool. But, I mean, it's still your yeah. response. Like, is um, you're also being asked for the lottery numbers for tomorrow? Just, just definitely. Uh, five fifteen seven twenty one nineteen thirty two. Um, so <laughs> they have to wait till this afterward to get the recording, right? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> if that hits anywhere, that's going to be the oh, best, dude. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, but like, that's the thing, right? So like, and that's why I say like, you need to be cautious about who you bring on. Um, because, you know, 
On the other side, if MSPs were pitching it properly to insurance providers, if they were pitching it properly to government regulators saying, look, we get what you're looking for. You're looking for a secure environment because the government and the insurance providers, the insurance carriers, not the providers, the insurance carriers are looking for outcomes. They're not looking for stack. They're not looking for your AV or, you know, your response time and what they don't care. They're looking for outcomes. What are you going to do when this happens? What are you going to, how are you protecting against these specific things? What are, what are your policies, right? And if you can give that story to them, this goes back to what we were talking about 10 minutes ago. If you can go back to giving them that story and saying, we're on board with delivering these outcomes, then it's a different conversation. Then the MSP becomes the sword and the shield. It doesn't become the liability. Mm-hmm. And that's what I think MSPs need to get together to agree on. And while I don't think, NSITSP is going to be the be all save all for that. I think we need to hear a lot less of the, and it happens on geek. It happens on Reddit. You know, I'm fully willing to admit anybody says, okay, well, you know, what are you guys doing for security? And it becomes a three page rant of which AV you're using, right? SDR, MDR, EDR, you know, whatever, you know, and it's so wrong. And so what's going to happen is the insurance companies and the government regulators that do know how to talk about outcomes, if you can't speak their language, they're going to make the decisions for you. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get screwed. Well, you're going to get screwed. And, you know. My MSP is going to be screwed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hear you might it's be so looking hard not for to say I'm an MSP anymore. In the vendor man. space. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and, it, and, and that's the thing. And that's the last thing I want. And that's why I go on these rants and these tirades in my soapbox of like, learn to have the conversation learn to give the outcome let's stop arguing over is web root really an av tldr it's not but like let's stop I arguing about these things but like you know but i use web root forever i never so, got so anything because i had 15 other layers until the blue right? screen terminal servers yeah well, that's, that's those are dark times oh, but like you know but whatever i mean okay but it also taught us to monitor and drive log retention and other stuff a little bit better you know so there's always a, a silver lining but teach those outcomes um what is partner success saying partner success kind of hitting it out of the park with yeah. some uh some good comments here wouldn't you argue if an msp follows best practice compliance nist cis well architected governed compliance of SOC 2 iso technically you're subject to doing the minimum these regulators are looking for that doesn't help a def- defamation of, uh, I'm assuming defamation of your name and loss of business in a report, but you can have the conversation regardless of the stack you use. Okay, Ooh. so that brings up an excellent point. Hey, um, I agree. Like it's, it, what he's saying is both correct and wrong. <laughs> because <laughs> well, you have what, you, yeah. it's always public perception. And if you're on a list that says your clients were ransomware and paid a ransom or not, you're immediately at fault. It doesn't matter what stack you use, what what you are. It matters what your clients are. And you can mm-hmm. argue all you want to, but your perception is immediately lowered as far as your reliability and your performance as a an IT vendor to users that if I'm if you're selling to me and I can see this then I'm immediately second guessing my decision to engage with you because right. If if you're not telling your other clients that they need to have this and requiring them to have this. How do I know that you're going to tell me the right information, right? There's so many things that you can't easily provide context for in something like that. You can be NIST, SIST, uh, what's CMMC, ISO, SOC. You can have all those certifications on your website, but that those mean jack squat when a client of yours gets ransomware. Those, those don't mean anything um, unless you're trying to go for something like a, you know, unless you're required by government institutions for PCI or for HIPAA. Um, those don't matter. Those are just standards. They're not regulation. Regulation means And they're not required. that different from each other, yeah, right? They're, like, What's that XKCD that, that you have? You know, we have all these 14 oh, the standards. 99 standards. standards. Now we have 15 competing standards. Like that's 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 exactly what it is. Yeah. And it's it's annoying but, to to have all this stuff and have this information out there. And it it's being all the same makes it less important because they're good guides to follow and you should follow them 1000%. But that doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of how a client 
current and potential future client perceives you based on what information is available? So what I have to add to that is, you know, when I give my soapbox of selecting the right client, I had a very specific type of client I would go after for MSP. I wanted somebody in business over five years. I wanted somebody at least 10 employees. I want somebody in a regulated business, right? Legal, medical, uh, education, whatever, but regulated. Um, I want somebody that was actively marketing themselves um, in whatever professional circles. And the reasons for all of this was if they're in business over five years, you know, what is it like 50% of businesses fail the first five years, you don't get to five years without being presented with challenges and, and getting past them. You don't have 10 employees without some kind of budget that you set year after year to be able to pay payroll, right? It's different being able to pay yourself and your wife or your daughter or whatever else or your husband. And it's a whole other thing to be able to pay payroll for 10 people. Mm -hmm. If you're in a regulated business, most regulated businesses have very similar ideals. And it's the same thing with these security constructs, right? You have some mechanism for data retention, some mechanism for individualized access and auditing. You have individual logins. You have all these you know different levels of security but you have these constructs that are there and whatever the regulated and i want somebody that's marketing because they're actively trying to grow they have budget for improvement right they understand they need to be better than they are today they're trying to build something so those are my four tenets for the type of client i would look for for msp and the reason i didn't care which regulation and i had clients across SOC, hipaa pci i had a couple that were fda regulated they made medical devices um but I had a, a, a cancer research uh, lab that was, they were global and they worked in a, they were based out of a, two different college campuses. Um, and 95% of the regulations for all of them were nearly identical. They were written differently, but it was nearly identical in what you had to do. And what happened is I just did what you're saying. I applied the baseline to everybody. And I made sure that when I interviewed a new client, they were gonna be on board with exactly that. And if they're not on board, it wasn't worth it to me. But here's the catch. The ones that were, were willing to pay more. So you could get that 200, that 325 a seat, or you know, how would $500 a seat change your life or whatever else, it doesn't matter. You could get extra money because you, were, you had these baselines and you were going after the right clients that cared about it. And that's a big deal. And, yeah. and honestly, it, it made your, it made your attack surface, your liability, your risk, your risk factor so much less because you were doing the right things across the board. It wasn't, does Betty have this or does Susie have that? It was everybody had it and that's it. So, you know, it makes you better. I agree. Um, and the conversation that's happening kind of in chat, I, I, I agree with, uh, we have Gavin versus Gavin uh, discussing <laughs> this. Uh, so, but Gavin's right. Like Kaseya had a massive ransomware issue and their sales have increased. Um, but that's also, there's, there, but, you know, other Gavin is correct. Um, it's, it's, it's spin, it's sales, it's marketing, it's how they present themselves. The, what you need to look at is the MSPs that were affected by that. Um, because the vendors got, he's got, they got millions of dollars, like, right. They can, they can float themselves. Um, oh yeah. So. Well, look, at uh, Dave Sobel was talking about Kaseya, you know, they did their earnings report, didn't mention a word about the breach last July, but their profits were in line with what they expected it to be. They did great profit wise, right? It doesn't matter. SolarWinds broke off Enable and forget password 123. It doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter how poorly they communicated. Oh, it does have it. It is, it is, uh, it is vulnerable. It's not vulnerable, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter because now enable its own product and it's a whole separate thing. It's not subject to what happened before with the Orion stuff. Right. And it doesn't matter, it's all spin, it, you Comparing know. Comparing yourself I, to big giant companies like AWS, Azure is not uh, a good way to measure the uh, intake or the uh, the perception of an MSP who is nowhere near the size of one of those companies. Like it's, the perception you can you learn have a from much it though smaller, i think oh yeah 100 percent. but you're much smaller you have a localized market that you have to deal with and the smaller your market the more likely bad negative press up will affect you from a business standpoint um yes. oh absolutely because like, that because like you said that market's hyper localized so you know if you screw over that abc realty on one side of the street i guarantee you that df realty on the other side already heard about it oh 100 good luck doing that door knocking or cold calling right yeah, it's, so. it's, 
it's um so uh now i think it's a good time to transition uh we spent a long time in regulation and deregulation and it's another one of those topics that you could probably talk hours on um so let's oh, get yeah. into the meat of this because you are a vendor and because this um was one of the things we discussed that hurt a little bit by the way uh, <laughs> saying you're a vendor yes um well i mean do you still have an MSP? You're client? right. You're not do you, wrong. Do you still have You're an MSP wrong. client? Did you finally? I have one. Oh, okay. Does that count? I have one. I mean, one. technically, <laughs> technically, you're still an MSP. Uh, you're still you're still managing them. <laughs> um, but let's talk about the responsibility. Um, that's spelled wrong. Oh my god. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, oh, it's so I'm being your dirty word vendor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's let's, let's I, talk I like about... it because on YouTube you can see, I mean, because you have the pictures. Yeah. So like when they come on tech bar and the other stuff, I can see us Gavin versus UK Gavin, like, you know, on yeah. Twitch, it's so much different. It is. Well, it's usernames and most people have registered their username with Twitch forever ago. So they like, yeah, they're, they're more mature now. Um, so. <laughs> mature. Uh, let's let's talk about vendor responsibility to MSPs. Uh, I'm going to type it here in a second. Thank you, Gavin, for spelling that out for me, uh, so I don't have to do that real quick. Uh, but before I but finish, but he can't copy and paste that, Gav, because he's uh, you know it's capitals. Uh, so. Exactly. Um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit shift and type. Uh, so, as a vendor, you have a different perspective uh, than a lot of MSPs have because being a vendor is a there are similarities, but there are a completely different atmosphere to MSPs. Yes, um, that's fair. So with your perspective, and we're going to extrapolate this because there are other vendors, uh, what do you feel is your responsibility to the MSPs that you service? So when I do my sales pitch, to MSPs, I, it, it's based on a lot of what I learned as an MSP, right? Um, whether you got dealt before because they went after your client that you registered a deal, or they put you in a bad position because your voice services were out, including your own internal voice uh, was out for hours and your clients couldn't even call you. Um, you know what I mean? So one of the things I always tell my when I'm pitching MSPs is I'm never going to put you in a position where you have to apologize to the client. Um, I've been there. It sucks especially when you don't control it. Um, I feel that vendors don't take that seriously enough. I think that, um, you know, farmers are very good at this. Farmers understand you have to, <laughs> if this gets misquoted, everybody in the world's going to hate me, but farmers understand they have to take care of the soil. They have to, whether they're rotating crops or whether they're rotating fields or whatever they're doing, they understand they have to take care of the soil because if they don't, you're not going to yield crops and it's, it's going to affect your livelihood. It's going to affect your income. Mm -hmm. I feel that vendors, many, not all, many vendors in our space solely see MSPs as revenue opportunities. And they don't see it as you have to care for the fields, these vendor, the MSPs, because if they flail, if they get regulated where your product isn't usable anymore, or whether they are, they can't sell anymore in the current market, right? I was asked on, uh, on another podcast with Marvin B, why, MSP, why vendors are so working so hard to make sure that MSPs know how to sell and how to market. Well, if you can't sell and you can't market, how do you produce income and how do I collect? It's a, it's a really obvious instruct, right? It's a symbiosis. But I don't feel enough vendors are taking care of the MSP on the security side, on the training side, right? Tons of vendors have a certification path and maybe it'll get you a discount, maybe it'll get you whatever, or a shiny little plaque or whatever. Don't get me wrong. I loved my silver competency plaques for Microsoft in my office. Everybody loves that shit. But uh, I'm sorry, can I curse? I don't care. Okay, cool. Fuck it. So, you know, I love my, I love my plaques and I love that stuff, but you know, on the vendor side, I think we have a responsibility and it's a really simple one. It's communication, transparency, accountability. Three tenets, super, super, super simple. When Log4j was announced, and when I say announced, I mean, you know, a buddy DM me and is like, did you see this shit? Um, and then I went and looked at the ISAO, you know, notification. Um, and then I looked at, you know, a certain Slack and to some shady hackers and see what they were saying. Um, yeah. You know, the first thing I did is I went to the vendor Slack that I'm in and I said, hey, guys, you need to review your systems and 
you need to put out immediate announcements of if you're affected, if you're not affected. Do not torture the MSPs to figure out if you're affected or not affected. These things should be coming out immediately. And then I did exactly that. I grabbed Jason Sligo, who's a good friend of mine of many, many years. And I'm like, bud, I'm calling in a favor. I need you to check my shit. I need you. I need to know where we stand right now. And he did. He logged in, examined our key systems. I was able to put out notices in our partner Discord immediately. I was able to put up stuff on the website within the same day. But our partners were notified where we stood. And the reason I'm so gung ho, the reason I'm so passionate about that is because, well, Kyle, how many vendors do you have, bud? Uh, oh, we don't have time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so, you know, Log4J happens and you're reviewing all of them. And it's not even like how, how much easier if the vendor says, hey, look, at least on this one, this one of 50, don't worry about it. You're good. Right. And now you're protected. That you, too, because not only do I have to worry about my vendors, I have to worry about my clients' vendors. Yes. It's, it's, yeah, it's sorry. I, I'm watching the Twitch feed. So like, since I can't see you in the Zoom, I'm watching the Twitch feed. And after you stopped talking, you were doing this. And yeah, I should know better. I, I, I'm watching the direct live. I'm staring at the live. You know, you're, you're over here. I have another <laughs> broadcast over here with Twitch. So I can see that how that works. And then I'm staring at this my This is broadcast. why you need StreamYard, man. I'm telling um, you. But uh, yeah. a conversation for another day. <laughs> but, you know, but like, that's the thing, you know, we have a responsibility. It's like the RMMs, right? We had conversations about the RMMs. You know, I think the ISAL feed should be going directly in the RMMs because you already have an audit of software. There should be automatic tagging. I'm not saying that's the ultimate answer for what's happening and not happening, but anything to give you a little more breathing room so you have a few more checklists, right? And I think that the MSPs, um, oh, hey, Ash, I see, um, I see the MSPs, you know, that they have so much work and they were getting so burnt out over this. And it was, you know, log 4 j 417, 418, 419. Blah. It was like every day there was another freaking one just when you thought you were fine. And that's just one example. 2021 sucked. I mean, oh. <laughs> 2021 I mean, was rough, man. That was 2020. Like it's, it just, it, it, it increased. It, it's, it's, yeah. What, what's the joke? It's 2022, right? Yeah. Uh, um, not even want to think yeah. about it. And we lost Betty White. And we lost Betty White. Like, what the hell, man? Right. It's already like, you know, so like, and that's what I'm saying. Like, so on the vendor side, I feel we have a responsibility to protect the MSPs. I feel we have a responsibility to make it as easy as possible for them. It's not going to be, apparently there's a hype train incoming. I, I, I just found this out. Um, Ashley is the best guy. So, <laughs> um, so, you know, we have a responsibility to, to and especially 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 i'm holding a higher bar to those vendors there are so many of us that were msps in the past right we were there we were on the front lines we, we know exactly what it's like when something's going on and your clients are panicked because like and i'll go back to log for j because the easy example that was in forbes that was in new york times this was not a you know print nightmare that you know they don't know it until you tell them and you shut down their printer this was a it's in their paper in their washington post and they're hearing about it and they got to hear it from you and you're like well we still have 417 applications we still got to audit and all we're really doing is looking for jars because we do, don't really know how to check because no so no vendor has an actual sbom yeah, uh, yeah. software bill of materials yeah you know so which <laughs> I, I don't think there is a real ashley cooper i think they're all ai 100%. um but you know and so but going back to that, okay, so that's one level, one side of the responsibility. There's another side too, right? I think when it comes to the transparency, um, it needs to be, it's okay to poke at me. And I know that sucks for big companies. I get it. Trust me, Jason Slagle, you know, is a dear friend of many years. And he's also a client. He's a partner of mine and he's been reselling my services for a long time. And I'm always terrified that he's going to ping me one morning and he's be like, I found some stuff. You know what I mean? Oh, it is. But it, you got to own that. Yeah. We, 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 I've had the conversation with him and he's like, Hey, you have this, this, and this. And I'm like, don't talk to me. Talk to my CTO. And I don't, I, <laughs> it, you're hitting a brick wall. Like I'll, I'll understand it, but like, it's, I'm not going to be able to fix it. Like, I know my limits. Right. Um, yeah. And that, that's kind of the thing, right? Like, and so 
you know, uh, <laughs> Jason's pinging me and geek. He wants an OIT plaque. Yeah. Um, I'll get, I'll get you a plaque. Um, which we call it. Uh, but you know, that's the thing also. So like, you know, that's what's awesome about Huntress with the Divid uh, contribution, right? The hundred thousand dollars is insane Huge. to be able to do that. Huge. Right. But here's the question. How, how many of the big four are in, you know, billion dollar territory or hundreds of millions of dollars? Why aren't they writing those checks? Right. And then you have the flip side. You have the it's OK to poke at me. Right. Well, vendor disc- uh, vulnerability disclosure programs. Um, is it OK that I pimp that out real quick? That oh, thing we were talking yeah. about. Go ahead. Yeah, and actually, this is a geek cast exclusive because oh. it hasn't been said publicly anywhere else. Um, so Slagle and I, um, and if you don't know Jason Slagle, you haven't been on Geek for 30 seconds. Right. Um, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> the bane of ConnectWise's existence and all vendors, to be fair. Um, the, the king of chaotic good. Um, Jason Slagle of CNWR and I are partnering up. Huntress is publicly backing us. Um, Finn Security is jumping in to help us out too. And we are going to create a vulnerability disclosure program workshop for vendors because part of the problem on the smaller vendor side, right? The ones, those of us that are under a hundred million dollars, you know, there's plenty of vendors that are under a hundred thousand dollars. They can't put together bug bounty programs. They really genuinely want to be out there, but they don't have the security chops to say, we're going to create a vulnerability disclosure program. So we're going to create a workshop on the right way to do it. We're going to create the VDP for them that is, you know, blessed and in and is in line with those tenants, right? Accountability, security, transparency um, that is in line with those tenants. And we're going to give it to them for free. Huntress is footing the bill. We're going to ask that they make a contribution to Divid, but we're going to give it to them for free so that they can have, now they're going to have to agree that they can be poked at and the appropriate way to do it and disclosure periods and all that fun stuff. But we're going to do it. I mean, that's and huge. Like, to make that's it ubiquitous. Amazing. Yeah. So it's, it's no longer you're a brand new startup vendor. It's no longer, you know, you've been in business for X amount of years. It's across the line, super, super easy. We're going to have a VDP ready to go for you. Right. And like, and VDP shouldn't be a large organization thing. Um, I hit up some vendors that didn't have some already and fair, all transparency. OIT does not have a public VDP. I've paid out bug bounties before, but we're going to use us as a guinea pig also to create this, um, to do it right. Um, but like I hit up vendors, I like I hit up uh, Halo PSA and I hit up Tim and I'm like, hey, we're going to do this. Do you want to jump on with us? He's like, hey, we actually have one. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, good for you, man. And we looked and they had a good VDP and we're going to share with them too in case they want to modify it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but we want to make it okay to poke so that MSPs can feel more comfortable in saying, we're not just promising security, we're standing behind it. We're saying, this is how we're going to respond because it's not, I want to be really clear on the vendor side. We're going to screw up. I promise you we're going to screw up. It's going to happen. It's people, like you, you we're people, error, right? Absolutely. It's not the mistakes we happen. It's how we're going to handle it when it happens. And as MSPs, as an engineer, I'm a CEO, but I'm, I'm an engineer. As an engineer, we all know mistakes on an engineering side are about planning for the mistakes and already having pre-planned responses. It's going to change when it happens, of course, but you want to have something on the books for a plan. And the VDP is that what's going to happen when you poke and find something. I think that's fair. And I think that's what, Um, you know, what's the MSPs deserve. I'd I'd offer my assistance. I mean, if you, if you need more hands, let me know. Um, I'm, I'm, I'll, Oh no, this is going to be a community thing for my friend. Uh, Um, You know how I feel all the communities unite. I'll, so. I'll throw my weight behind it. Um, I mean, that's it, that kind of expertise is expensive, um, and not all. Yeah, not it all is. Well, can as- and that's that's why you know Sligo was doing it. He was like, "Yeah, no, I'm in." I'm like, "No, no, we're we're gonna make sure you're compensated because that's the right thing to do." And then Huntress, of course, comes in and like, "Yeah, we got it. Don't worry about it." All right, like because yeah, you know it's freaking it. Huntress, right? I'm gonna do it. Uh, this is <laughs> so, now the praise Huntress corner yeah yeah um, praise huntress, huntress and is, you know uh not only were they the first vendor uh on the geek cast to participate um but he ref- kyle hansloven refused to acknowledge that he had a product uh in that thing um not only that but uh they are all about community all about making sure their partners and everyone who is in the msp space is uh taken care of it doesn't matter if you use huntress's product it doesn't matter if you even know who they are 
you're it's you're an MSP, you're a person, and they care about that, and that is extremely rare in business alone, let alone our niche of an area. So to those who uh, utilize Huntress, um, good on you. Uh, buy more licenses. Uh, to those, yeah, who don't, I, I utilize Huntress. Have for years. Uh, we are as well. I, We're a Huntress partner. Our company is not. So MSPG. quick story about that, because um, uh, been with Huntress very, very, very early on. Um, their first deployment script for Lab Tech. That's how far back this goes. Mm -hmm. Their first deployment script for Lab Tech was written by me. Um, I wrote it because I needed it for me. I put it up on uh, GitHub and uh, Kyle said it was like their most downloaded script for like two years till they created their own because I'm a YouTube developer. I'm not a developer. I, I you know, I'll, I'll sit there and, you, you know, whatever all day long, but I'm, I made it work. Yeah, as is the MSP way. Yep. Um, but when I did it and I, I put it up there, he sent me a handwritten note. Um, this is before they had Huntress uh, like paper, right? Before they had stationery. He put he took a, I think it was like a Hilton notepad and he put a Huntress sticker on it and he hand wrote a note saying, thank you. I still have that in my office. Um, that. And I'm like, yeah, this is the kind of company I want to do business with. Um, so, you know, they're awesome. Not only that, but he, he hasn't sold out yet. And I don't think he ever plans to. And that's a, that's nice um, to know he, that. He talks, um, he's very transparent about what 100%. money he's willing to take and what he's not, which I, I deeply appreciate. I keep trying to throw um, my money at him, but he, he doesn't want to take. <laughs> uh, granted, it's not much. Uh, so i understand well, they only have like that what was it 40 million was the last round oh, yeah. i mean you know it's just... i tried to give him five bucks for anything and he just said no nah, it's fine <laughs> <laughs> which makes sense i, mean, if I could have invested yeah. back in the day Man. Yeah. it's but kyle kyle runs a tight ship he's got a great crew and yeah. every single person that i've met at huntress cares loves their jobs and loves the company um they are hiring and oh yeah kyle is amazing yeah. And, and cheers to Martin over at Ruffian Software. He put it in the chat and I, he DM me. Of course, I saw it on Geek First in the DM because that's the fastest way to reach me anywhere. Um, but he says he wants to join the VDP and I will definitely keep you in the loop, dude. Uh, so good for, good on you. Yeah. Um, Martin runs a PAM software. He's a vendor. Uh, great guy. Uh, I met him. I had lunch with yeah. him actually because we, I could I could drive to his ass <laughs> right down the road, <laughs> uh, like twenty minute drive. It's great. Uh, you but, can drive to Miami too. It just takes a little longer. Yeah, but I don't. I, I have a truck, uh, and it's not a modern. It's not a new truck. It's like ten years, eleven oh, years old please. at this point. So I have a, I have a twenty twelve Armada. It's thirteen miles to the gallon. I still take it everywhere. Uh, I so. got I'm at eleven and sixteen highway maybe. Uh, yeah. So. I'm not coming. I'm, I'm flying to Miami if I'm coming down there. I, I'm not driving. Um, Fair enough. Uh, if I ever want to go to Miami, it's sinking. Like I've I've seen the documentaries. It's not going to last. What is this? Jason wants to know how we move the needles below names. Ray is clearly winning at this point. Uh, he's watching <laughs> the animated uh, After Effects needle, um, and that's the 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 guests always win. I I never win. Um, it's very unfortunate. As it should be. Uh, I do my best. I, I don't want to give a. I don't want to give any secrets or spoilers. But on if you notice on Tech Bar, which you've been a guest uh, many to and co-host. Um, yeah. But uh, if you notice on Tech Bar, the guests almost always win. But that's just how it goes. Of course. I mean, so. you you invite someone on, you give them a little bit of uh, you know kudos for yeah. taking time out of their it's day. It's the smallest button. Uh -huh. Couldn't figure out how to subscribe with Prime, so I just paid. I'm bad at Twitch. So uh, that, that's all right, man. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Uh, I can plug. Let me let me do this. It's, yeah, it's yeah. been a while. Um, you can subscribe to our channel for free with Twitch Prime. Uh, you just connect your uh, Amazon account to your Twitch account, and then you're allowed to 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 subscribe with Twitch Prime for free. Uh, yeah, do that. It's free. It costs you nothing. But uh, Jeff Bezos pays us out of his slush fund. So you get a, you get a couple months with the prime or you get like one subscription per month or something like that, yeah, it's right? One free per month. So, I mean, it, that's what it, I do. Yeah. It doesn't cost you anything. So if you do watch Twitch, go give it to someone, even if it's not us, you know, make Amazon pay people more. 
Um, hey, it, it costs big bucks to get this production value to, to Geekcast feature now and the other all the other stuff you do. So you know, let's uh, let's let's support uh, MSP Geek. Yeah, million dollars. Let's go. I want to retire. <laughs> Oh, good times. Um, okay, let's get back. Okay, Huntress. Uh, yeah, corners over. Uh, Huntress is to, awesome. Back to vendor regulation yeah. um, or responsibilities. Excuse yeah. Me. Um, so, I mean, what? Uh, so, Log4j is a great example. Like you, being able to, if if you know, being able to get information digested from a vendor about their stance and status of that particular vulnerability is great. But what about other things that doesn't necessarily tie to security? Like what about hmm. uh, their future plans and where they plan on taking their own company? Because obviously you're, it, it's a partnership, right? I may yeah. be paying you money, but I expect a partnership. Um, oh my God, Gavin, thanks for the $10. Uh, I, I appreciate <laughs> are, are you that. talking about a roadmap of sorts? Um, is not, that... not, not just a roadmap. Like a roadmap is great. That's just a dev, a dev thing. Like that's just shows me what you're hmm. planning on developing. But I'd also like to know what, your plans are for your business future. Are you planning on expanding into a different market? Are you like, cause that's, that's valuable to me. Like I, I'd, I'd much rather have one oh, central vendor than 16 different vendors. Um, it, and I, I, I don't see enough vendors showing me their future strategies. I don't see, I, I don't think I've seen any, like, um, I know Huntress. Is I, 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 I can Huntress. understand it. Yeah. I mean, Huntress is a different animal, right? Like, you know, they're, they're unfair almost to compare because now that they have the financial resources, they have significant financial resources. Mm -hmm. um, what's a roadmap? They have significant financial resources, but they still function like a smaller org, right? They still function like the the scrappy guy in the coming out of the working out of the uh, the the garage um, or the basement, you know. So they're an unfair example. Uh, we'll take Huntress out of the mix here. Okay. Um, Let's talk for about the smaller the players then. specifically. I'm sorry. Let's talk about the big four then. So the big four, look at who they're beholden to, right? They all, all big four, uh, either have, they all, all big four have PE money behind them at this point. Um, you know, they have what they can and can't say publicly. So I completely understand it. I mean, you know, they say something and it literally moves markets. That's a dangerous play. 100%. So I understand why it's very difficult for them to say certain things out loud. That's fair. Um, you know, I do believe in transparency. I do believe in communication. You know, those are things that I think are super important. I think it's more important even for the smaller vendors that are coming up because you have to garner trust, right? How do you garner trust if you haven't, you can't prove, you know, how many vendors did we see pop up over the last two years? It was kind of nuts. Oh my God. Um, but you have to prove you have some idea of where you're going, right? And that's what roadmap isn't just dev. What are you planning to do with product? Halo PSA has a phenomenal roadmap. You know what I mean? It shows what I they're have, doing with their business. It does. Like I, I even have issues with their roadmap. Um, like it doesn't say when it's coming out. It just says, next. right. Like it's even then, it's very vague. Um, I mean, if you ask them, yeah. they'll answer you. Like because I've I've seen that happen. Like if you say, hey, Which when's this one coming? Yeah. yeah, it's Q2 or Q1. Um, but it's it, it a roadmap just shows me what you're planning on developing for your product suite. Um, I, I'd like to so, know what's your plan. I mean, are you, are, it, it's a very difficult, and I understand the big four, you know, con, you know, they move markets. It's easy to say, you know, look, we're yeah. looking into going into this market, boom, pricing jumps up. Well, th there's also regulations, right? Cause some of them are, are public companies. So they have regulations on what they can and can't say. So true. You know, and that's, that's fair. Cause it, it's funny when CW. I say something and the Twitch is like a little bit behind and then I say you do this yeah. and I don't know what you did it to. Exactly. You, you start, <laughs> start second guessing yourself. Um, that's why I only leave the right. chat open. Uh, yeah. The, I, uh, I the big it. four to brain viruses question, uh, Jason answered it. Cause a data CW enable, um, they're big four by market size and by revenue. Um, that's yeah. what determines those factors. Um, you know, market share that, that simple, um, you know, but, you know, even for the, the mid range players and the smaller players, I, I agree with you hundred percent. And, and these things are possible. I will tell you as a vendor, I go to the partners I work with, right. Poly Grandstream, NetSapiens, our platform, um, Yealink, and I have 
good, and even our distributors, I have good tight relationships with them because I need to know what's coming out ahead of time. I need to know what's coming out, you know, what's the Q1, Q4, 2023, what are the plans so that I can plan my stuff around. So my distributors tell me when a price increase is coming 90 days out or 120 days out, they tell me when there's stock restrictions coming or when they're getting low for other partners so we can plan around it. Um, they, you know, the vendors tell me when there's new products so I can share with my partners, right, with my MSPs. I was sharing stuff today, Yalink's new Bluetooth headsets that are coming out um, in, in a couple of weeks and promos. I was sharing that uh, yesterday. Um, you know, and these things aren't publicly announced, but I share it because I know it's going to, um, it's going to at least shape a little bit how their go-to-market play is going to happen. And you know, just like, you're, just like you're saying, you don't want to have a 16 vendor. So if you find out, we're going to go back to hunter skin if you find out they're working on you know um the edr play or you find out they're working on a mac agent or whatever i'm trying to stick to things they've only said publicly yep. um Smart. you know when you yeah um you know when you find out they're trying to work on these things then you say okay well i'll hold back mine i'm not going to start investigating a million other things i'll wait the 60 or 90 days because i can wait for a trusted vendor to come out with this thing it has a significant impact on you, right? Oh, 100%. Because, because I'm not going to dedicate. Like, it costs you money. Let's talk about the Mac agent. Like if, if I'm, that's a regulation thing. That's not necessarily a uh, something that's useful. Like, because I mean, the market share for viruses and Trojans and malware and all that is not in the Mac space, right? There's, it's unequivocal. They're, it's not that they're immune to them. It's just that they're not targeted as much. It is still a benefit and it is still a checkbox you will have to check. But I'm not going to invest time into finding a Mac specific AV agent, which is going to be a completely different software package than I already have. If a vendor I use right. is developing one, I'm going to try to maybe put a stopgap solution if they can give me a, a rough estimate or, you know, if I need to check that box immediately or if I got a timeline, you know, I'm going to make business decisions based on what they tell me. And that's going to make our partnership closer especially but even beyond that right if you have vendors that that work on a global market right um so today we we cover north america right and we're we're exp <laughs> i keep i hate saying roadmap tm but you know the, pl the plan is to the plan is to expand to uk and, and australia this year um and we're still on track for that um but you know those those partners that those vendors that have global footprints um and if you've been doing this long enough, different markets have different things come to them. Um, you know, follow Kelvin, right? And, and the stuff that comes up to him uh, and his in his world is ahead of the ahead of the curve, even by U.S. standards. Mm -hmm. Like there's some stuff he brings up that haven't hit us yet. So from the vendor global view, right, that eagle eye view. If we can say, okay, this is starting to come, this is starting to make waves, these new technologies are coming, or this is, we're seeing these things play out. If I can share that with you and you can start investigating it even a quarter earlier or even 30 days earlier and get ahead of your competitors, how valuable is that, right? I mean, yeah, you know, vendors have a responsibility to give you some marketing and help you with sales and how many rebrandable assets can I really give you before you want to throw up? But if I can yeah. sit here and say, hey, this is a new business opportunity that's coming out and it's this is it's had this impact already in these markets and it's going to be coming to US or to your part of the world in, in this quarter, how valuable is that to know it ahead of time? That's really freaking awesome. And, and vendors have the data. I promise you, we have a ridiculous amount of data. Mm -hmm. It's nuts. We should be sharing it. Um, or giving it to and, us in a, a digestible format that allows us to better plan our businesses, right? Correct. That's it. Yeah. I, I don't care that you have a bajillion users in Miami, right? It doesn't matter to me. Now, if you're expanding yeah. into the UK and I have businesses in the UK and they yeah. have a VoIP partner, that's that's important information to me because maybe maybe we have a better relationship than that vendor over there does. I'm going to much be much. Or you have more a client inclined. that's getting ready to expand themselves, or a client you had to pa pass off because you yeah. didn't have a presence there. You know, it's it's it that type. Of, I mean, it's it's not just a black and white. Give me all your information. There's obviously no, of shades of gray not. through it's that. Qualified. Yeah, you want, yeah. and it's a it, building partnerships with your user base from a vendor side is uh, important. Um, I think I think it, it's not nearly as good as like there's vendors who are terrible at it i mean connectwise right now is doing a massive amount of 
communication and discussions and they do a, a they they've done a monthly mostly monthly candid conversations with the MSP geek community and that type of reach and that type of you know presence and conversation is unprecedented with any of the other vendors that I've seen no one else does that and you know there's an argument that they needed to do it um and there's but there's they don't have to do it right they you can they don't argue have to. that they a, needed to a comment was made earlier that you know good bad or otherwise connect this isn't have, they're not hemorrhaging money no not at they're, all. they're still taking in hand hand over fist now that they should do it that it, they're going to get they're going to be better for it absolutely yes but have no qualms about it regardless of who leaves and who comes they're still signing new customers yep. that's not changing I, I agree. So, and it's 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 important to note that they any vendor outreach any come any I mean, uh, Halo is present in the community. Uh, Martin Ruffian Software is present in the community. Um, you are, even though you don't want a vendor channel. Um, <laughs> if you guys want a vendor channel, I'll put a vendor channel. But I I prefer to go lurk in the other channels, even like fine. the that's, CUK. You have your own I, part in Discord. I understand. Yeah, I do. I, I do. But see, you're 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 ahead of the curve. Um, Dado is, is so that, that okay? So partner success mentions that right? They mention, you know, we get transparency. Can you expand to other areas and make business easier for? Can you do shorter paragraphs? We're drinking, buddy. No, like, <laughs> <laughs> can you expand the other areas that make business easier for the MSP to conduct business and grow with the vendor? That that community yeah. that community that communication, absolutely that. Does your vendor, I mean, Kyle, you and I both sit together on several partner advisory committees. I know you're in a million other ones too, um, as am I. Does your vendor have a, a partner advisory committee? So forget me telling you what I'm doing going forward. Am I listening to you for what you feel you need going forward? Um, one of my LinkedIn posts from last year, um, and I don't post much because I try to, I just ingest what everybody else does. But um, one of my LinkedIn posts was from last year was, I'm going to stop telling you what I think you need. I'm going to shut up and listen. What do you need from a vendor? And I got some awesome feedback, including from you, Kyle. And I got some awesome feedback saying, you know, we need you. We need to be able to trust you guys. We need to. Be, we need to know what's going on in the future. We need. To, we need to. When you say something's going to happen, we need to happen. We need you to not pitch something and then miss deadlines because the miss the miss deadlines hurt you. Yeah. Just the MSP, the vendors listening to the MSP is a giant thing. And it tells you what kind of vendors they're going to go. And if you've been playing along at home, if you're, if you're noting these things down, the ideal MSP vendor is going to have a VDP. They're going to have a security construct that is collaborative and transparent. They're going to have a partner advisory committee or some way of engaging with you. They're going to be active in the community so they can listen to the overall voices, even the ones that aren't their own partners. And they're going to be participating in those things because they care about what's going on and they're going to be sharing their information. I just gave you the tenets to have, this is a video I've been trying to work with Tom Lawrence on for like six months. I just gave you how to pick the best vendors. hundred percent. Like it's easy. You can tell the, the quality of a vendor by the presence of their people outside of their safe spaces um if they're it doesn't forums are a horrible example because forums are dead but if if they're present on their forums they have a system of forums and they're they're communicating on their forums that's cool but no one's going to go to them and post constantly no one's going to right even on the partner advisory side you know those councils and stuff are great but does that make your other people who aren't a prayer who aren't in those councils and are not a part of, you know, do they feel like they're still heard? Because if I don't know those exist, even if you, you could tell me they exist, but if I don't know how to get onto them and I don't know how to be a great individual and understand what you're doing, then it's going to be difficult for me to have trust in you as a vendor. Like it, I mean, you know, if, Oh yeah. There's partner Absolutely. councils all, 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 all over the place, but it doesn't mean that I'm, you know, I, I can be a part of it and I feel heard. Well, I mean, there, there needs to be levels of it, right? Like, you know, any of us that have played with, and I think we all have at this point played with uh pre-market software, you know, there's an alpha channel, there's a beta channel, there's a canary channel. Like we're used to these constructs, the partner advisory committees, the insider groups, that kind of stuff. Those are the ones that get the first flesh. And I I'll be honest, I do it with my own packs also. 
there are certain things that I talk to a few insiders and I'll be like, I'm thinking of doing this. Am I an idiot or whatever? And then I'll flesh it out with them. And then I'll sometimes go to the larger, if it has, you know, it has legs, I'll go to the larger community, my full partner group. And I'll say, okay, guys, guys and girls, we're looking at doing this. Give me your feedback. And I'll do that. So it's not always immediately to everybody you can't do that because sometimes you have to also just like we were talking about with market data you have to qualify the noise right you can't just throw everything because it becomes too much but you know you have your varying levels um and you have to do things you're uncomfortable with right like the people i've asked to advise my um uh, advise my on my pack you know i took people that were all all levels of the spectrum right whether they were the tiniest ones where they're the largest ones whether they were what vendors they pre came from that they were using previously um looking at people that are in different markets or looking to expand to different markets or had different technical proficiencies you know because i want to get all of the point of view i want to get a perspective of each of the different areas of point of view so that i can have the full or as close to the full picture as possible in that microcosm and then when we go out bigger then we go out bigger you know but let me ask you this those though. those vendors that collaborate great i'm sorry do, go ahead do you publish uh meeting notes or anything from those pacs no we don't because they're uh, you know there, there's a level of privacy that that's inherent oh, you know what i mean um i you think know. though in that transparency art you can because to me i may not i may be one of a million other of your customers right i'm not going to yeah. be on your pac i'm not going to be a part of your pack that's fine no i would never have you on my pac completely no. understand <laughs> Um, I hate VoIP, so we, it wouldn't, I'd, I'd give you useless information. I, I've seen your VoIP platform. I get that. So. Um, well, I don't, I don't do VoIP at all, even before our VoIP platform. Uh, but it's, it's, a like, even if there's like specific points that you discussed, like, uh, mm -hmm. maybe, uh, pain points, um, like if there were pain points yeah. that were brought up and those are listed somewhere. So I know that that information is getting to you and stuff like that can easily be public that doesn't necessarily mean I'm, yeah. I'm expanding an x or i'm rolling out feature y what do you think like that stuff i understand needs to be private um but there, it's it's a chicken and egg problem or double-edged sword problem yeah um i agree with you there as with everything there's a way to do it properly right mm -hmm. um one of the things i'll give an example of we have a doc and we actually we were talking about you know, pre-show, we were talking about a friend of ours that has some insight and, you know, when an issue pops up with a certain vendor and you have five or six people complaining about the same problem, nine times out of 10, the vendor already knows about it. And the vendor already has some kind of information. They should be ready to give some kind of statement mm -hmm. saying, hey, we're aware of it or we're whatever, but not just let everybody, you know, pitchforks and, and torches. Um, and we were talking about maybe in certain candid convos stepping up starting those meetings with hey these are the items of note that we're seeing this week these trends just to share privately right even though there's always that scare that some stuff could be publicized um but toward that end um and i wish more vendors did this um we have a doc um sorry if you hate that i keep sharing no, like this bad. um <laughs> we have a doc so no software is without is perfect right that doesn't exist um we have a doc for known issues that we that have that are certain problems that keep coming up and when we're uh going to attempt to fix it and you know when you can expect it but it lets our partners go and say okay well we know what's going on if this issue is here I, there's no point in entering a ticket. There's no point in, and this doc can be improved with work workarounds and yeah. some further detail, but at least we have a doc so that you can go and say, okay, we know this thing is a thing. So why make it a ticket that's going to go through 16 levels of, of support and dev and escalations and wait, and you're going to wait two weeks to, or three months or whatever, just to find out it's a known issue and it'll be fixed eventually. So I feel that that kind of transparency have, do you have is on table stakes. List, uh, uh, issues that aren't software related um yes um so i mean we're a software company at the end of the day we're True. a ucast play um but there you know there are other things like as a business not just um like i called into partner support and it took me 20 minutes to get in and it's consistent um or uh uh, those pain points I was I was talking about earlier, you know, it, there could be a myriad of them. Um, 
stuff like that. So, that you so give me so but work on educate me. Yeah, like what what would be the things you'd also like to see there that we can be more transparent on? Because um, so uh, okay, um, it's hard to not call it out specific <laughs> instance. I, I want to try to be. You know, I don't want to call anyone out specifically because this is something that's yeah, yeah. probably never been done before. Um, so let's say there's issue with licensing um, and I have a way to up my licensing in your portal and it works fine, but I have to sign a new contract or whatever. But getting that contract back takes six months or, you know, an, right. an extremely long time. Um like there's a you have your process listed as you know in that you'd have like uh, okay you know oit underscore contract yeah and it, it takes too long to process contracts internally to get them yes. to you in a reasonable um, manner or whatever uh, i'm trying to figure out a good answer for uh, a good example for this um and i actually do have one um channel conflict this is one of my soapbox items uh especially for vendors that sell direct and sell in the channel um, and to any vendor that says they don't sell direct, I'm going to say they're full of shit. Um, I'm not going to mention any other vendors that are in the space that also own an MSP that sells direct, uh, but the vendor doesn't, but I'm going to yeah. go ahead and say you're full of shit. If you say you don't sell direct, <laughs> um, but stuff like this, like what you're talking about, right? Like have some kind of pre disposition, pre written expectation of what's going to happen. Should a conflict come up and, and here's a hint guys, it should heavily favor the msp 100 percent of the time I mean, come on if you're going to sell on the channel favor the channel don't don't you know don't pussyfoot around it um but you know like channel conflict policy um i do we do publish our slas so you know we have contractual slas absolutely but we also publish you know the slas that are internal for you know if you email billing, you can expect a response in this amount of time that we strive for. It's not a contractual. I'm not giving you a, a bill yeah. credit if billing took three hours to respond instead of two hours. But these are the things we strive to attain. And as soon as I can get the data out and I can show it publicly, so I will do, I used to do that with BrightGage back in my MSP days. And I will absolutely do that as soon as I can get it working with Salesforce. Let's, let's, use, um, let's use SLA as an example then. Um, yeah. So everyone has contractual SLAs generally as an msp yeah. everyone has internal yeah. what the customer ex so let's let's call the customer experience slas um so let's say you're down a staff individual your sla is going to probably still meet your contractual obligations but your personal goals is not going to be met right so do you think it'd be beneficial or something that could be or should even be uh on one of those known issue lists stating um specifically you know, hey look i have an issue with my um you know I, we have a, an internal yeah we're down problem. one person we're, today yeah we're limited we're, staff I, I get what yeah. you're saying um i've done it in the past when it's been brought up in like in there and the discord is very the always the first person we're not going to put this out on twitter it's it, like that stuff's not going to happen you know what i yeah, mean yeah no, you, you want to um, centralize the location for stuff that like that yeah and, and honestly the discord's where we have the most um the most rapid communication with our partners it's not a you know there's several hundred partners in there they know what to expect we have every people from every department in there um it's the fastest communication um you know, and also a lot of times posting a status update, like it becomes a job in its own, right? Yeah. Um, even if I give it to Simon to say post this. Um, but there's been plenty of times where like, you know, coming off a holiday and we have, you know, we're short staffed on the tech side or whatever, um, you know, where somebody will say something and we'll mention it. This is where we're at. Can we do that proactively? I think you're absolutely right. Um, you know, I, I love those billboards you see like urgent care or the emergency room, 20 minute wait or five minute wait. Yep. Um, you know, I, I think that's absolutely, you know, we can show that, you know what I mean? We have this amount of ticket load currently. Um, I definitely think we can step up that transparency. We have this amount of tickets waiting status. We have this amount of tickets going on so that they know what to expect. Um, I see partner success asked, you know, for an MSP, um, how important is official ticketing support that escalates through time compared to a more manual chat, email, phone support? Um, I can only answer for me. I do everything based on my experiences in the past and how I feel 
the best way to do it, but I'm always open to suggestions. My thing is, um, we don't have a different phone number for billing. We don't have a different phone number for account management. It is you call the number, you get somebody live answer 100% of the time. They're qualified to take the information. And in many cases, if it's a light thing, help you. If not, they put in the ticket for the appropriate channel. That same staff member, that same staff group answers the phones, they answer email, they answer chat, and we have the same response time goals for all of them. Um, that means you're getting a uniformity to response. And I think that's incredibly important. Um, we've all dealt with different vendors that if you, well, if you can call, not all of them allow you to call, but if you can call, you get a different level of response versus if you get on chat or, you know, you go on chat and they assume it's sales or you, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. That's not always the case. Um, so that uniformity is very important to me. Um, we do escalate, you know, like anything else, we alert based on time. You know, if something has been modified status within X amount of minutes or it's waiting client response um, within X amount of minutes or whatever happens to be, um, we have alerting. Um, we have uh, published escalation policies, I think are very important for your vendor to have. Not just escalation as far as ticket tier, but also escalation as far as management we have a red flag policy somebody's pissed off you know they're like oh, i'm calling for this again i have this problem i guarantee you somebody on my staff is targeting that and bringing it up to management so we're aware not because you asked but let's pay more attention to it let's see what's going on um to be proactive and i think those are table stakes they're not complicated things it doesn't take a giant i don't have a giant staff i'm a 30 person company you know what i mean i think if you have the appropriate management and the appropriate reporting structures this is possible at any size company um you bring up it just takes a matter two of great effort points um that i want to touch on uh the first is publicized escalation that like i don't know how your business internally operates you can tell me but i'm gonna forget I mean, we're in the sales call. You'd be like, "How do you? How does ticket escalates? How does that work? How's that? You know?" And you can be like, "Yeah, it works like this." But a publicized one on how to how my ticket goes from being completed because you have it internally, or you should as a as, oh, even as an MSP, yeah. you should have that um, some form of and, that. And just as a quick tip, in each the way our teams is divided up, every teams and Microsoft Teams, I hate Teams or whatever, Microsoft Teams. Um, every team has their wiki and their general, and we have our SLAs there in the general also for email, phone, whatever response. They're there, so every team has, besides our regular documentation, they have quick access to what the expectations are. There's no excuse for not knowing it, which means they can also share it if, if needed. Yeah, um, and that information to as a user is important because I may be upset accidentally. You know, because I don't understand how you operate and I may be more aggravated because I expect your SLA to be X, but it's actually Y and it's communicated to Y, but I, I just didn't know and I assumed. And so I think that's huge. You know, I, from my experience, the majority of conflicts come from a misinterpretation or misunderstanding of expectations. Mm -hmm. I, you know, and this is a conversation I was had, having, uh, we were having previously, you can make a mistake, you can have the client say you screwed up and whatever, and then walk away saying thank you when you're done with it. And okay. whether you're MSP or your vendor or anything else, it's just a matter of saying what to expect. And that's, you know, with all my, with our tickets, right? Uh, how many times, and I did this, we made this mistake in the past, you tell a client, you give them information, you mark the ticket waiting client response, but there was no next step there was it was just do that did they come back and say that's fine you know versus giving an actual next an actionable next step and that's what we do now it's it's a everything has a next step until it's finished right giving those expectations of what's going to happen i'm going to review this and within 24 hours i'm going to get back to you or earlier i'm going to do this and then i'm going to follow up in a day just to make sure you're okay uh, give them what to expect 100 percent of the time so they're not frustrated because otherwise you're depending on their assumptions. And I guarantee you their assumptions and your understanding are completely different oh, if yeah. you don't state it overtly. So the second point I'd like to touch on is escalation specifically. So as a, a community person who runs community stuff, uh, we love having vendors in MSP Geek because our philosophy is we want to build the relationship between your user base, current and future, and yourself because it doesn't happen a lot where you can actually build a, a real partnership. Um, 
you have a face, like you have an account manager that you might see quarterly or monthly or whatever. Um, but right. that's not a relationship. That's just someone making sure the account doesn't leave. Uh, some you have some good salespeople. I'm not going to knock all of them, but for the most part, that's 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 your linchpin. Building it, uh, you're having your dev involved in in those conversations. Your sales engineers and understanding it much more. Product managers much more. You you build a better relationship. Um, we think anyway, uh, and it's proven effective for several vendors. Um, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, so with that in mind, we advise vendors who join us to have, uh, sales engineers and not just support people because in, in the, because the, you're going to get sales questions, obviously you're going to get, how does your product do X? What is that's, that's just the nature of the game. Um, but when someone has an issue, which is going to happen, how does that addressed? Um, I always feel that the user should open a ticket. There should always be a ticket. Um, at yes. basic, you're going to get basic support questions like, hey, where's where do I find X in the system? Like, that's a support question. You're going to get that stuff. You're going to get, hey, how do I do this? How do I run a script? Like, how do I install a monitor? How do I, you know, you're going to get some basic support questions like that. There's no way to field those. To sending them support is going to be a bad time for everyone involved, and it's just better to answer them or point them to a documentation link with some clarif clarifying information. Um, yeah. But I am 100% in support of you having a ticket that needs escalation to be able to have someone who can escalate it. Um, because there are times when even in the most well-oiled business that you'll get a, a stuck ticket or just something that gets overlooked or there's miscommunication and text and phone tag happening. And it's it just, happens. It, Absolutely it, happens. But being able to be like, hey, look, I think ConnectWise is one of the best I've seen this. Hey, look, can you take check it 176 um, and get some people on it? And Kyle Jackson, one of the, you know, the, the famous hero of the ConnectWise, uh, will come in and be like, yeah, um, management's looking at it uh xyz happened we'll get we'll get it taken care of and then the person will be like thanks i just talked to someone it's appreciate it or hey they're they're literally calling you right now they're talking to your other dude <laughs> in the building and they're like oh cool and I, i've seen that a couple of times um that happens a lot <laughs> yeah it's it, it's and it's just like it's it's that type of stuff that is amazing um that doesn't happen with all vendors um and I think that's a huge thing. It's it's one of those like open and transparent communication system, but you're allowing, you're going to people and you're saying, Hey, look, you're here. I want you to be, I want to be, I want to build a better partnership. I want you to understand what we're doing. And I want you to be able to have your needs met by my business that you're already paying. Um, that loyalty goes a long way. I mean, if if you have a, a take Huntress, if you have a vendor that you trust and you build relationships with, you don't you will a hundred percent be willing to let slights just roll off. Like you won't even recognize oh, the yeah. issue. Um, like Huntress could be like, yeah, log four J or log four J seven <laughs> affected us, and we'd be like, cool. <laughs> And I trust that they we handle that that situation. We were talking about that pre-show. I'm like, you know, Kyle Hanselman could stab a baby. And like that the majority of the MSP it. community would be like, that baby, I bet that baby was like a hacker. It was shady. Yeah, that, right. Like, he, he took crypto from Huntress. Like it's that. that right. That'd you, be... you build that trust. And, you know, and uh, and I'll give it up. Yes, Kyle Jackson is an absolute godsend. That dude is a superstar. I don't know how he does it. He comes in <clears throat> with a smile and he tries to genuinely help everybody. Um, Bags is another example uh, right. from Akronis. Um, Bags I met years ago in, in, a, in another community and he was just in there not selling, not just genuinely trying to help everybody. He has sent me more stuff uh, as for those, I'm sure everybody here knows, I'm, I'm a moderator on, on RMSP. He has sent me more stuff on like, no, it's not competition. It's the same community as far as I'm concerned. It's right. I've said that before. It's just bigger. Um, <laughs> Way bigger. I, it, it's only it's 15 fine. times bigger. It's not that big of a deal. First so, <laughs> it's, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> right. But, you know, we also have our own mascot, um, you know, our, our dumpster fire. <laughs> so, we just have a G. <laughs> Thanks to Steven for that. It's right there. Um, 
Yeah. Um, which I'm call it, but you know, bags has sent me stuff on like, Oh, this moderator thing or this thing, or these changes are coming up on Reddit stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with the product he sells or with any, it's just genuinely trying to help. He's just such a good guy. You know what I mean? And that doesn't go unnoticed, you know, and it, it takes longer for vendors to, you know, to benefit from it. It absolutely does. Um, I, I try to do the same, but you have a bunch of these people, and I will put this call out to vendors. Um, don't just throw anybody in your community channels. Please, for the love of God, don't do that. Have people that genuinely want to help, right? Um, AI Ash is a, is a <laughs> AI Ashley is a perfect example, right? Yeah. Um, she, she was born for the community. Um, you know, do not just take just anybody. It takes a certain type of person to be involved. Um, our own vendor, uh, our own Discord, you know, one of the things like you're talking about, one of the things I'm very proud of is we have representatives of every department in there, not just sales, not just account management, client success, um, but we, you know, we have orders, we have porting, we have dev, we have, how often do you see devs in channels, right? Not like you mentioned not. Halo, but it's not often, you know, so when stuff comes up, they're asking questions and we can jump in and we can help, you know what I mean? Look for that. And I'm not saying you can have that with every organization, that's not easy, but you know, look for people that can genuinely want to help and get results. And there's people out there. Um, yeah, I <laughs> saying I'm not selling because I have no idea how to sell. You know what? And I would still buy anything from you, bags. I, I I appreciate it. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. And Ash, there you go. Uno community love. We need a mascot tool. G head. I'd be totally down for like like a cheese head with like with a gradient uh, MSP geek G uh you know with a dumpster fire on top like we can we combine everything yeah of course can we, can. we do Obviously, that 100 percent. i'm down for this i mean if i made this happen we can make anything happen i'm just saying so this this is cloudy mccloudy this is our uh cloudy our yeah this is our mascot so someone definitely read it involved in that <laughs> the g is the head the dumpster fires the body i'm totally down with that let's let's make that happen where's we're simon i need to get simon involved in this <laughs> yeah so juan and and juan your your yep. your digital guy like that's what that's what we need yeah we need one of those yeah um well he has free time he can't do anything for you until you you know except my uh, position as mayor of booze town so <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> I don't know why. I, just, I feel like I got to refuse. Just because, <laughs> at a, a pure principle, I get it. You know what I mean? Uh, as a as a ridiculously unnecessarily stubborn person, I get it. I completely understand and respect it. Um, just don't lose the sunglasses. The OIT mascot doesn't have any eyes. Yeah, it does get very creepy. Um, that's that's the absolute truth. So these eyes came from this came from China. Do I have another one? Nah, I don't have another one near me. But like he has like the circle under the eyes and it gets really creepy sometimes uh, when the glasses fall. But, you know, it's what are you going to get? Hey, where everything else comes from, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, how to order. How do I order all this? Uh, Shop.oit.co. Uh, That's uh, go to msbgeek.org. There's a link on the top. Which I want to thank you for delivering, uh, not uh, making good on getting me the appropriate sized MSP Geek logo uh, for my hat. I had which, to. I mean, I couldn't let I couldn't let that continue. I had yeah. to find the no, fix was... and fix it. <laughs> so I and and that's the thing, right? You could completely screw up and make an undersized logo on your hat, and you know have a an, an insanely loud and boisterous and obnoxious person complaining about it every five minutes, or you could make it right publicly at a, at IT Nation Geek Bar or MSP Geek uh, Meetup. So, hey, I yeah. mean, you got to say Geek Bar or Tech Bar, one of the two. It's the same. It it's at that point, thing. it was it was merged. It was Geek Cast Tech Bar. Absolutely, Wait, it, it was a good time. Geek Bar Tech Cast, something like that. We'll go with that. It all works. Um, so, all right, back to uh, responsibilities discussion. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it, 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 at the end of the day, it, everyone, you know, it's it, it's humans talking to humans, and I I always try to, you know, underscore that even even if people are irate with something, like even if there are other vendors that they have issues with, um, there are vendors who uh, decide to lock you into three year agreements that auto renewal and you can only cancel at the 90th day before the renewal happens. Uh, 
and then yeah you need an old priest and a new priest and Mm -hmm. you know or or like you said you know you i don't want to call out anybody i'm not going to but like i had a certain vendor that required 90 days notice and but they took three weeks to respond (laughs) <laughs> it was like what am I, at least you know, acknowledge you got my me. request right at this point right. like a human not an automated How? message that's not right right that doesn't count I, I would have taken an automated response i didn't even get that much because oh, wow. it goes into a black hole yeah yeah and, um, and but that's that's one of the things like we don't do i'm not trying to pimp i'm just saying examples of how you can treat your clients yeah you know, one of the things we do is we do two-year agreements, but we do automatic month to month after that. Why? Because on the voice side, all my setup fees and all my stuff are covered, like after the two years. So why am I going to sit there and tie you to another contract? Those things suck. MSP is different. MSP, you're making contractual obligations, especially with NCE. Screw Microsoft for that. But like you're making commitments. So MSP is a little different. I, I fully acknowledge oh, yeah. that. It doesn't mean you can't communicate with your client though on what to expect. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, it's... <laughs> one year agreement with automatic three year, uh, automatic three year renewals. There, yeah, that's, that's, that's how you know. You know, he's an MSP. That, that's, yeah, <laughs> that's that's true MSP. Once you've gotten to that level, you yeah. don't care anymore. You just want that that cash. Someone's exiting soon. I, I have to imagine Drew Hack swag would involve him sitting in the chair with his legs up, trying to replicate a certain logo. Um, I'm not sure I want that in my house. I love Drew to death, but I'm I I, I, I can me. see that happening. I could easily see that happening. Um, so yeah. yeah, I mean that's that's the that's the end all be all responsibility of vendors. Um, I think we pretty much covered that topic to death. Uh, yeah. So now now the fun part uh, Q and A. Does anyone yeah. uh, in the chat? All the chats. I have Geekcast open. I have Twitch open. Um, it's linked in Discord, so I'm not open in Discord. Uh, I it's mean, it's not open. just for gamers, man. It's not. It's open. It's... I have Discord open. It's just I'm not going to open Discord specifically to look at the Geekcast channel in there because it's bridged. Well, it's bridged, right? Yeah. Hey, Discord went down today. Okay. <sighs> Good lord. Okay, and and how many integrations do you have? See, if you were on Discord, you could build integrations with different ticketing systems or different support structures per vendor and charge for that. But you can't do that on Slack because you're limited. You don't even have Giphy. I mean, come on, dude. Well, I do that because we have a limited message, and if we added Giphy, then we it, it would die. We would. I know. Be, and if but Discord, you don't have that problem. You're right. That's why most of the channels are bridged, and if they're not, they're planned to be bridged. So, mic yeah. drop. When when is uh, Booze Town getting bridged? Uh, it already is. Is no, it's not. Yeah, it is. Mindy was in. You didn't see Mindy's Discord app in there earlier. Oh, oh yeah, I see the bot. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Mindy keeps getting dragged into <laughs> alcohol aficionado. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, can you explain? I got a question. Can okay. you explain Goots to me? Uh, yes, I will have. I will happily explain Goots. Um, so there was someone decided to write an AI bot to parse Twitter and look at as many okay. memes as they could uh, and then build a meme off of Goots uh, or build a meme off of the information they got. And what that is, is the image that that is present in Goots. It is a massively fat duck with a tiny head and Goots underneath it and all like capitalized. So uh, I love as, that. Okay. as most memes start, it's completely stupid. Doesn't matter whatsoever, but it's Goots. So, um, it's been so are we going to see like Wes Spencer talking about the crypto coin for Goots like in a couple weeks? Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Ashley put in the know your meme Goots, uh, that in case you have questions, nice. the Twitter images in there. Uh, it's fantastic. Um, so since Ray started with questions, does anyone else have any questions? I mean, Ray, I have you can my, ask more questions if you want. My line, but let's see my Goots. No, I'm looking at Goots. I, I, uh, I'm fully vested in this Goots thing. This is uh, um, yep. this is a little bit of fantastic right here. It is it is just one of the things that like, it's like that's that's definitely an AI meme, but it's good. Yeah, okay. no, so, that is so much better than it could have been. I I mean, yeah. Tiered perf- perpetual pricing versus pay as you go pricing from an MSP standpoint or a vendor standpoint. So. It's so relevant to today's humor too. So like, I, let's speak a little on both, right? Because, you know, you're an MSP, I'm a vendor. We can yeah. we can talk about that, right? Um, 
here's my thing and you hit the nail on the head when you see them doing like one year you know initial sign up and then a three-year agreement it's because they're prepping to sell yeah, absolutely you can call that a mile away they're prepping to build they're building their books because they're prepping to sell pretty easy um you know and, and there's nothing wrong with that I, i'm not against oh, yeah. building a company to sell i have plenty of investments in other SaaS companies where it is for the point of building it up to sell it i completely get that you know but you know don't do a disservice to your clients either you know what i mean don't sit there i understand go to market i understand building critical mass i understand building revenue that looks good to your pe's or your vcs or whatever and then you know building up a good book so you can sell it off but like don't screw your clients right that goes back to the revenue that goes back to the responsibility to the msps um you know tiered perpetual versus pay as you go the problem is this, you talk to five MSPs, you'll get six different answers on what they want. You know, your one person shop, your startup, right? The one that's running this on the side because they have a full-time gig at a, at a at a corp or whatever, they're gonna want pay as you go. They don't want any lock-ins, they don't want any minimum commits. And, and that's fine, I get that. I don't fault you for that. I don't fault anybody for that. The problem is, is on the vendor side, it's very expensive, you know, the costs don't really come from usage, the costs come from the number of clients, the number of MSPs we support, right? Because uh, I'll take my VoIP uh, MSPs, for example, um, training them and getting them set up, whether they have one client or 15 clients, the work is almost exactly the same when it comes to getting them getting them situated on the platform so they feel comfortable, getting past the how do I do this, how do I do that, this heck, hiccup came up, it doesn't matter the number of clients. So when you have minimum commitments, you can account for that and build appropriate support structures. I'm 100% on board with charge enough so that you can provide the appropriate level of support. Don't sit there and charge $5 a workstation if you know it costs you $25 and then you're doing a disservice to your MSP client because you can't cover your costs. You made that choice. Mm -hmm. Vendors have the same choice. Don't undercharge for what it is and then complain when you can't and then sit there and everybody's complaining because you can't afford support people. You can't afford account management or whatever. You can't build automation or build new integrations. Well, that takes a certain amount of money. You know what I mean? And you just have to be comfortable with that. Um, I feel like in everything, there should be a way to grow. You know what I mean? That's so it's all about financial sorry it's all, all about financial commitment so if i sit there and i say well you know i'm going to pay as you go at x amount but i'm then willing to commit as i build up revenue and we do that with channel partner versus white label right most msps come in and they say i want to do my I have, have my own brand and i want to sell under my name and whatever it's fine but you know and kyle i'm holding you to it if you i get too salesy shut me up fine. but um you know but you know the truth of the matter is most of the people that come, they don't have the initial money required and the commitments to do white label. So they start channel, but we have a migration path to go into that. I feel vendors, there's no reason you can't offer one to the other. Charge more for pay as you go. And then when they have enough revenue that they can go to a tiered commitment, let them do that. I don't see anything wrong with that. That takes a little more effort and takes a little more management. But if you really care about serving the community, I don't see why you can't do that. Is, is that fair? Kyle, I mean, yeah, no, I agree. You're with on that. the flip side. Um, yeah, no, that's that's, yeah, no, it's there's hundreds of vendors. Like, there's I'm I'm close friends with multiple single user MSPs, and having options available to them is important. Um, and being able to transfer between one and the other because it it not only does it it build that loyalty to you and your brand and your partnership that you've got going, but it's an accomplishment, right? Um. Oh, absolutely. I, yeah. I, as a business, like it, when I moved from paying slightly more per my user to be able to get a slight discount, and now I'm in a, a contract instead of, you know, a month to month or pay as you go, whatever it is. Um, that's a maturity. Um, that's a success target for me. And well, and going back to what you were saying, you're talking about, you know, the roadmap or being able to under, being able to grow with the vendor. If you know where they're going, you know what you're doing. You know, that's one of the reasons, you know, anybody that goes to talk to us, you know, I've always been a big fan of here's the MSA, no NDA, no nothing. Here's the MSA. Here's the pricing. It has the tiered pricing already in advance. So you know what to expect. And it's funny how many MSPs I talk to that sit there and say, okay, but what if I get to this volume, how much is it going to be? I'm like, dude, it's page five of the MSA. Look at it. 
because we're already so used to like having to negotiate that with vendors. And that's so unfair. That's completely unfair. I wanted to ask about how you felt about public pricing, obviously as a channel only system, right? You know, as servicing only MSPs, you can't publicize that. Because you yeah, have to vet I, I, I want to protect their revenue, right? Yeah. You want to protect the MSP's ability to, to charge appropriately. But, but that doesn't mean that I have to make it difficult to get the information, uh, yeah. right? You know, so, um, so Huntress you is a good example. Pricing right? information, public ish, right, right? I mean, within reason. Yeah, public ish. <laughs> I like that, public ish. Um, you know, and that that's one of the things. I mean, you could set up a demo call and say, I want to see an MSA, and that's it. That is the beginning and ending of that call. And I, It'll happen. I know you're not going to sign, but if you want to do it, do it. Huntress is a perfect example of that. They don't have public pricing. You sign up for a trial, and as soon as you sign up for a trial, the pricing is right there, right, right after the login. It's there. So you know, and I, I we keep doing this Huntress, you know, fanboy thing, but you know, it's true. They've taken a lot of th- comments from the community, and they do it right. I'm not a fan of all of their pricing structures. There's some things that aren't great, but I think that's a good example of how to handle things be public with stuff you know what i mean just because i don't have it on a public web page doesn't mean i'm going to make it difficult for you to get the information you need I, i'm 100 percent on board with that yeah i i i mean it seems that that's the aside from some of the bigger vendors that's the primary uh push to from from the smaller vendors and medium-sized vendors that are out there is that they're just because honestly 90 percent of the time that's one of my weighing decisions of who i talk to um, I got to know I can afford it either by absorbing it Absolutely. or passing it on to my clients. And if, if I'm out of, if you're out of my price range, there's no point in us establishing discussions. So, so let me ask you that because you bring up an absolutely valid point. I see the value of a, you know, a, of a Ferrari. It doesn't mean I can drop 200 K on, on a car. Right? right. Um, you know what I mean? But so how do I, as that vendor, I'm going to use you for market research now, cool. uh, or the chat as that vendor that knows I can't put it out publicly and I will get it to you as easily as you want. You set up a call, you shoot an email, I'll get it to you. But there's plenty of vendor of MSPs to say, well, if you don't have it publicly, I'm not going to talk to you. How do you balance that? Like how do you, you know what I mean? What would be the expectation there? Cause I so, can say, I'll make it easy for you, but everybody hates sales calls. I understand it. You know, I mean, just being open, like, Hey, look, we're, we're an MSP channel vendor. We don't, we don't put our pricing up to protect our vendors, our, our MSPs. Um, if you need, if you would like to know pricing information, we're public with it. Reach out. We'll send it to you. In, in any, put a contact and, form. Um, yeah. Throw it down right there. I mean, it's at, at that point, I, I understand it because I, I understand. I, I, I get it. Like, I, I don't want, if you're, if you're not competing with me, you're much more likely to be able to partner with me. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, and for the love of all this, that's holy, do not have a pricing page that says contact us. I hate that. I hate when I Google and I'll Google like vendor pricing and I'll get to their pricing page. It's like slash pricing and it's all contact us. Like you suck. Like don't I mean, do that. If, that if I, I, I would agree with you if you do both. If you're a specific MSP yes. only. I understand have it because because everyone that's what the first person looks for is pricing page. Yeah, um, it's SEO. I get it. I just hate it when I'm searching for stuff. <laughs> if if I search for that and you say we're a channel only, put it in the put it in your, put it that in your SEO tag. I mean, Google pulls that description. Um, so you're saying you set only. the expectations up front so they know what to get. Yeah, that, that's where you be transparent. Yeah, I, right? I, I'm with you. And um, I want to answer partner success. They put a question up farther up um, asking about what the VD, VDP program is or VDP is, mm-hmm. um, I'm not writing it. I want to be very clear. I'm having somebody far more knowledgeable than me write it. I know the tenets of it, which are when you find something, how do you disclose it? What the expectations are for disclosure, right? Because a lot's been said also for like the security researchers that find this stuff, they want to get something out of it too, whether it's notoriety, whether it's money, whether it's whatever. But they're not doing this. I mean, they're doing it for whatever their reasons happen to be, you know, and if they disclose it to you, you know, don't sit there and say, okay, well now you can't say anything about it ever. Right. So, you know, I think fair, all, everybody agrees 90 days is fair um, for you notify the vendor and for them to 
correct it or whatever it is or give communication. That's what Google said already is 90 days is the standard. Um, so tenants like that, when you notify, I'm not going to go after you for trying to poke my systems. I'm not going to go after you legally. Um, in exchange, you are going to tell me what you find in exchange for that. You have 90 days that you don't tell anybody, but after the 90 days, you can tell anybody you want because that's on me to have fixed it or not have fixed it. You know what I mean? Tenants like that stuff that is fair and equitable to both sides that and I'm sure there's going to be more because Jason's far smarter than me on the security side. I'm a network engineer, but those are things that I think are reasonable um, and we'll be open to it. Yeah. Cross um, and yeah, has some good information. Yeah, they have the uh, they use the Hacker One's bug bounty program, which is Hacker One is also a phenomenal uh, phenomenal group, absolutely. Um, you know, and and Acronis, uh, Ac- Acronis, I, I always say it wrong. Uh, I always say Acronis. Um, it's Acronis. Yeah, uh, it's official. It's I'm not. It's Acronis. It. No, it's it's Acronis. <laughs> it's official. Change. Well, I've I've had Amy Luby correct me, and I've had Bags correct me, so I. Um, You'll never. But me. I'm from the south. S- oh okay yeah. well it, th- i mean that's just the answer i'm from the south okay yeah. so um i'm from miami florida does that count no nope. that doesn't count miami yeah, is not florida, south ever. florida is not in the south no we're the nation's I'm wing right. See, says <laughs> I'm right. saying you're right it's a cronus <laughs> or from being from the south so, either one but that's the point cronus is a giant freaking organization i mean they're massive you know what i mean and so you know they have they're doing the right things but there's tons of smaller vendors that also want to do the right things. They just don't have the ability to, this is what we're making it equitable across everybody. Why? Because MSPs want to be able to pick their, their thing. And I'm, and I'll put this out to even the non paid ones, right? Tactical. Um, you know, you absolutely better believe I'll let them participate too. If they want to have a VDP, even though they're open source for the most part, but the agents not, if they want to participate too, they're, they're welcome to. We want this to better the community, raise the tides, right? Yep. As as is the geek, uh, the geek motto. Um, Partner success. Is so we got another questions. situation. You you sign an M- What was that? He's full of questions. They're they're full of questions. Not he. I don't. I, I, yeah, I, I don't know who partner success yeah. is, but they're they're like you know this is the uh, Barbara partner. Walters of, uh, <laughs> of MSP. It's pretty amazing. Um, so we have another situation. You sign MSP. They also sign as a reseller. You do a reselling deal with the client under the price you signed with them as the and MSP. Now the MSP wants to restructure its pricing. Any suggestions there? Um, that's a little twisted to me. So uh, they're signing their their MSP signs, but they also are signing up as a reseller. So their pricing is lower because they're reselling your price. So, I mean, do you, you don't think you have a reseller program? You just sign MSPs, right? Like you don't have. So we have channel and white label. Yeah. Right. So yes, ish. Um, but you know, you got to pick one, right? You can't be half pregnant. Pick pick one lane. Pick the other lane. Um, you know, or both, um, which we call it, you know, so with us, you pick what you have. And so like we have our NFR, right. Or not for resale, which is month to month. And so you can use it and it is what it is. And you cancel when you want to cancel. Um, when you go white label, you have your white label cost. Um, so they know it's, you can't do NFR and white label. You got to pick one, right. Um, it's a graduation to the next step. You can't, you know, play in both pools, so to speak. Um, if that doesn't ex- answer your question, restructure it. And I'm, I, I want to answer your question. I just, I'm so not sure I understand. He, yeah, he's that. asking if you have an MSP who signs on to use your product and also signs on as a reseller, which you said can't happen because you don't, um, you don't have that option. You're either one or the other. Right, you're one or the other. I mean, we have you know MSPs that do NFR and then they're the channel program, but we're billing the clients, right? Yeah. Um, so th- okay, I'll use Huntress as a good example of that as something I, I don't like, right? So it's not all positive for Huntress, and I've told them this. This is not a, a bashing Huntress thing. I think at this point we all agree we're all fan people of Huntress. Um, but like their thing, they started a reseller program, and their reseller program was tied to contractual lock-ins per client. It wasn't a tiered aggregate system, right? My whole thing is I like aggregate. If I've sold 501 seats, the entire 501 are at the 500 band. If I sell, you know, 650 seats, it's at that 600 band. Um, Not the first 500 are at this and the next 150 are at this. Um, The Huntress reseller model is 
I have a contract with Kyle for 250 seats locked in for a year at that price. And then I have a contract with Ashley at another 500 seats locked in at that price for Ashley on a separate contract uh, schedule. I'm not a fan of that. I, I think it should be coterminous. I think it should be in aggregate um, because that's how MSPs sell. They, they want to build up, like you were saying, they want to build up and graduate to the next thing and get the benefit for it to apply across all of it. Um, that's my personal opinion, you know, but that's. So how would you handle that as a vendor? If you had, if you were on the Huntress side of that, how would you handle that situation where an MSP wanted to uh, do both? If the MSP wants to be the reseller, they can go to the reseller terms and I would do it in aggregate. Um, I think, I think most MS and I don't agree with per client contracts. Yeah. Um, if I'm from the vendor to the MSP, I don't, I'm not a fan of the vendor having per MSP's client contracts. Um, customer one has this term, customer two has this term. I think it should be an aggregate. I think you should have month to month. Uh, this goes back to that original question, right? Should pay as you go versus tiered. Um, the way I would structure it is I would say, okay, well, you know, you're going to do month to month, then you're going to be at this price. And when you want to sell that next client and you have 50 more seats, do the 50 tiered commitment and do the new price. Right. And it's going to be month to month. Um, there's so, no, no problems with monthly minimums. His, his question is, um, yeah. because I think I finally get it. Um, so uh, you, you, <laughs> you don't, I know he's, they're, they're leaving now, but it's fine. Yeah. They can, you can watch the YouTube video. Um, yeah. You set up a reseller program for me mm -hmm. to resell your, oh, for me to sell VoIP, right? right. I, I sell OIT VoIP now. I get a cut from what you, from what I send you. Um, mm -hmm. I also have my MSP signed on to, for my client base. So right. I get a cheaper price being a reseller because I sell it at X and I get a cutback at the end of the day, right? Um, or however it's structured. Um, but now, because I'm a reseller and I have resell resold items and I'm giving you money, I want to restructure my MSP to be my same cost as my reseller. That right. is the, so, I think the issue that he's trying to ask. So my thing is I would, it's a, and that goes back to the half pregnant thing. Um, I think it needs to be, you're either reselling the product and you're setting the price and making, doing a markup or you're getting a kickback for me selling it and you're getting a percentage. I so, don't think there's a way to do both to make it fair. I mean, I agree with you. Um, I, I wouldn't, if as a vendor, I would not have that option. You could do one or the other. Um, but yeah. I think that, because at the end of the day, if you wanted to resell, you could move your MSP to the, your reseller and sell your services through the resale account, like to your own yeah, client base absolutely. at that point. Um, Isn't that what we're supposed to do with Microsoft, right? Our our own internal tenant should not be our main tenant. It should be a client of the. Uh, I don't. I don't you someone know. else deals with the Microsoft. I, I, yeah, I don't. None of website. us actually do that. There's a website. Well, there you go. See, part of, Barbara Walter says you got it right. Yeah. There nice. you go. Good. So you want to flip flip the statement? So you want? I don't. I don't go, go to your other meeting. Um, <laughs> You broke Kyle. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean it's 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 a delicate situation. I mean, I, I I wouldn't allow that to happen as a vendor. Yeah, um, it, it's and that's that's those are the things when I talk about vendors joining NSITSP. Um, when I talk about vendors setting the stage for a lot of things, I think vendors have a should have a certain level of business acumen a certain level of experience, a certain level of um, an eagle eye view of a lot of things that we should be able to anticipate these things. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I the, the story is old as time. I did it myself. Um, I was doing something else. I got a, somebody that wanted me to start servicing their clients. I decided I could do it really well. And that was the MSP was born. I started selling contracts. I started whatever. It was not a business plan. My very first iteration of this was not a business plan. Um, most vendors that start do have a business plan. They do understand what's going to get. So they go into it with a different mindset. Um, that includes how are you going to handle channel conflict? How are you going to handle pricing strategies? How are you going to handle corporate communications? How are you going to handle statuses? Um, 
you know, how are you going to handle support and expectations and SLAs and contractual obligations and all the other stuff? I think a vendor should be held to a higher standard to have accounted for all these things. And I'm not saying vendors are perfect. Absolutely not myself included. Um, but we have a different level of business strategy than most MSPs. Your MSP is larger, but you know, your MSP is also not the norm, right? Um, you know, there's tons of smaller one person, two person, three person shops that are still trying to juggle sales and marketing and tech support and account management and billing. And they don't always bill on the first of the month because they were doing a support ticket with print nightmare. And now they're doing billing on the third of the month that month. And they're doing it at three in the morning and their wife's pissed at them. We've all been there. Yep. You know what I mean? But vendors should have the ability to account for this stuff because we have more experience at it. Um, and we should be able to avoid those pitfalls for the MSP and not only avoid them, but edu help educate the MSP so they can make better business decisions. That's the whole point, right? Raise the tide, share the information, participate in the community. Because um, if we're not doing that, we're not holding ourselves to our responsibility, which is to make our soil better. Be that better farmer by improving the fields. If I improve the MSP, you're going to be better. You're going to sell better. I'm going to, I'm going to do better because there's more money to be had. Yeah. That was a nice little dovetail. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree that that's, that's exactly what everyone strives for. Right. Um, and I, I think that wraps it up. I mean, there's no more questions in the chat. Um, all the chats are, are clear. Uh, so, um, feel free to, to, to pitch yourself further if you'd like. Um, anything like i don't pitch i you know what everybody knows me i do voip if you want to do voip come talk to me but if you want to talk about this stuff and you think i missed some things let's talk about that in geek instead uh, what can we do to make it better what is the best program you know what do you expect of your vendors because i guarantee you i kyle sees it kyle's in my vendor slack i am railing on vendors daily we can do better we need to step up um and so if there's something you see your vendor not doing or you would like to see done um tell me and i'll be another voice for you because you know now i do have one last ask kyle um you know uh you've you're an amazing host uh you have shared a lot of information you have this dull set voice you know you're almost putting me to yeah, sleep um i just need to know will you finally acknowledge that i am the mayor of booze town sir fine you can you can have the title mayor of booze town yes yes it has happened here 8 16 p.m eastern on january 26 2022 i will raise a glass to that as mayor of booze town thank you sir i i appreciate you yep and on that note, uh, I'm going to hit the transition button and I'll see you guys on the next one.